when you're looking for Mingus Marauder football is on the air. The 2023 Mingus Marauders are proudly sponsored by Jones Ford Verde Valley, Arizona's best since 1970. State Farm Insurance agent Jennifer Griffin. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Taylor Waste, service tailored to your needs. Rock Zoo Screen Printing, where clothing comes to rock. Longfellow Excavating, we dig your ideas. Northern Arizona Healthcare Orthopedic and Spine Institutes. Mangus Marauder Football is also brought to you by these fine businesses. Reese's Tire and Automotive Tire Pros. More miles for your money. Larry Green Chevrolet, the people place. All price insurance. Call 634-2311 to get your quote. Gettles High Desert Mechanical, heating, cooling, and plumbing. Don't settle, get Gettles. Tiffany Construction, a reputation for exceptional service and an unwavering commitment to quality. D-Best Plumbing, they believe in getting it right the first time. Sun Country Custom Woodworks, serving all of Northern Arizona with commercial and residential custom cabinets. And Yavapai College, you can, we can, together. And now, here's the voice of your Mingus Marauders, Jackie Bessler. Welcome one and all here to Homecoming 2023. Jackie Bessler along with you. Nick Yatsenko is back. And uh, how was the wedding? Was it good? It was fantastic, Jackie. But I did miss being up here in the booth with well, you. Well, you were missed here. Uh, I had lots of people ask about you, so you were definitely missed. I'm glad you had fun. Um, I explained m multiple times last last game that it was you were at a wedding, but it was not your wedding. Correct. Yes, Correct. Okay. Not right. my wedding. Okay. I'm going to brought back a little bit of Spanish with me. Okay. Muy pequeño. 
Muy pequeño. Uh, un, un pe yeah, yeah, just pequeño. Okay, okay, very good. All right. Well, um, I just wanted to make sure that everybody understood that. So, <laughs> you know, that was a good thing. Because you would know better than to schedule a wedding during football season. Correct, <laughs> correct. <laughs> Got it, okay. All right. Hey, um, out here today, we're going to have beautiful weather. Maybe not as, as beautiful as the beach. Actually, probably just as beautiful yeah. as the beach. Yeah, it could be. It's cloudy out here. I don't think we're going to get any rain, but uh, temperature kickoff is supposed to be 76 degrees. So oh. that's phenomenal. So it's nice and it's uh, cooling up a little bit up here. Absolutely. No wind on the field. Old Glory is not moving at all out here. So if it stays that way, then that will be to you the advantage of the aerial attack out here today. Uh, it's going to be Deer Valley coming to town. The Mingus Marauders matched up with them last year. We're going to talk about that one. And, uh, and uh, that was a victory for the Mingus Marauders now trying to pull one off here on homecoming 2023 we're going to take a break when we come back we're going to look through uh, the Mingus Marauder schedule the Deer Valley schedule learn a little bit about the teams when we return after this All Price Insurance on Main Street in Cottonwood is your local insurance provider for personal and commercial insurance Call and compare over 150 different insurance companies for home, auto, commercial, RV, motorcycle, boat, or ATV. Specialty insurance and insurance bonds are no problem at All Price Insurance in Cottonwood. I'm Chris. And I'm Tandy, owners of Taylor Waste. We're homegrown in the Verde Valley and nearly your last local choice. We want to be your first choice for residential and small business garbage service. Get a free month service when you make the switch to Taylor Waste. And enjoy monthly service as low as $16 per month. Visit TaylorWaste.com for more information. Or to start service, call Taylor Waste at 649-2662. Taylor Waste, service tailored to your needs. People often refer to Larry Green Chevrolet as the people place. Keeping that reputation is a priority in the community and with every customer that comes through the door. Larry Green Chevrolet, we're better and we'll prove it. If you're in the market for a new or pre-owned car, truck, van, or SUV, you'll find our selection extensive and the sales team professional and courteous. Visit Larry Green Chevrolet just off Highway 260 next to Walmart or LarryGreenChevrolet.com. Starting in the late 1920s, Grandpa Gettle and his brothers laid the groundwork for what would become a family legacy. Almost 100 years and 100 patents later, Gettle's High Desert Mechanical continues to raise the bar of quality heating, cooling, and plumbing products and services throughout Yavapai County and Flagstaff. Call Gettle's High Desert Mechanical Heating, Air Conditioning, and Plumbing at 567-2200 or online at goettlshdm.com. Providing solutions for your comfort. Don't settle. Get Gettle's and go Marauder. Back here at Mingus Union High School, the 2-2 two and two Mingus Marauders hosting the 2-2 two and two Deer Valley Skyhawks out here today. And Nick Yatsenko took uh, the uh, the specialty pizza over to Deer Valley here today. How did that reception oh, go? It went great. It yeah. went awesome. I stopped at the administration desk. It's only about 20 minutes from where I live, so it was awesome. They absolutely loved the pizza, and I hope uh, some of the athletic department got to see it, too. Uh, and I believe that you're on Phoenix Television, Flippin' Pies. I got a little bit of an interview on 3TV. They did a... Uh, four-minute live shoot right in my kitchen in my house. So wow. that was super fun. And uh, yeah, thanks for bringing that up. Yeah, that was that was pretty awesome. Yeah, uh, Nick texted me and I'm like, you media mogul, you? And this is, wow. <laughs> Holy cow. So the Mingus Marauders 2-2 two and two here tonight. Uh, they lose the first two to Mesquite and Astoria Foothills and they beat Blue Ridge in uh, a miracle fashion and then uh, take care of Copper Canyon last week by a score of 42-12. to 12. So Mesquite is now 1-3. and three. They lost to Gilbert 24-14. to 14. They'll host Maricopa here tonight. Uh, Australia Foothills is also 1-3. That doesn't help for power points at all. They no. lost 31-17 to, to Buckeye. And they'll be on the road to Seton Catholic uh, here tonight. Blue Ridge with a bounce back win 24-21 over uh, Marinci and they take the long trip to Safford this week. They are now 4-1. and one. Copper Canyon fell to 1-3 and three after the Mingus Marauder loss. They'll take on the Flagstaff Eagles. That'll be really interesting to see uh, what they do with that. 
Deer Valley here tonight. A 7-0 win over La Joya Community in a defensive battle last week. We're going to talk about that game as Deer Valley is 2-2. Two and two. Flagstaff 1-3. They shut out Desert Sunrise 27 to nothing. so they pick up their first win of the season. Bradshaw now 3-1 and one, and a good win 41-20 over St. Mary's and now they've got the long trip to Apache Junction to Ooh. take on the Prospectors here tonight. Coconito is 2-1. and one. They lost to 4-0 and oh Arcadia, the Titans, and they'll try to bounce back against 2-2 two and two Poston Butte here tonight. Lee Williams leads the Grand Canyon region at 4-0 and oh here, and they they stay perfect by beating Moon Valley by a score of 49-19. They're away at 3-A. Mojave, who is 5-0 and oh this season, so that's power points even from yeah. the 3-A division. And Prescott, surprisingly, the Badgers are start the season 1-3. and three. They lost to Vista Grande, who is 4-0, 41-19. Now they're on the on the road to one and three Combs looking for a bounce back. Deer Valley, uh, an impressive win last week. They end up two and two so far. Yeah, and like you said, defensive battle last week. Uh, they only won by seven points. Only one touchdown in the entire game against La Jolla Community. Uh, La Jolla Community is 0-4. So like you said earlier, not po no power points really for Deer Valley getting that win. Um, and that's going to be their uh, one out of two wins. Their other win comes against Sourita. Um, they won 28-8 to against Saurita. Uh, Saurita is one and three, so not many power points coming from that team either. Um, but uh, the other loss that they have, so Deer Valley's two and two. The other loss is North Canyon. They lost in a close one, 26 to 18. Um, and then Greenway at the top of the Copper Sky can, uh, Copper Sky Division, sorry, is three and zero, oh, and they beat Deer Valley 32 to nothing. So they were able to shut Deer Valley out. And in the last three weeks, Deer Valley has only scored, well. No, they've scored quite a bit, but they've only given up... Uh they're struggling defensively a little bit. Um, so Marauders hopefully can take advantage of that and put up a few touchdowns tonight. Well, certainly so. And last last year they took care of business with a shutout. We'll get into that during the next section of pregame out here. Um, but most importantly, one of these teams is going up, one of these teams is going down. Mm -hmm. So one of these teams will leave here tonight 3-2 and two, and will go into division play with a winning record, and one of these teams will not. And that, that's going to be huge if you're, if you're looking at playoff complications or implications, yeah. uh, you know whether or not uh, that will play a role. That that will be huge. Homecoming festivities, homecoming week, all sorts of fun stuff. The Power Puff game was uh, last night, and I I understand that it was full of all sorts of fun. Uh, there was music and food trucks and inflatables out here, and people came out and had a blast. So the junior senior squad, the Black Mambas, beat the senior freshman squad, the Batitude, by a score of. 24 to 18. By the way, I love both of those names. Yeah. Those are very, yeah. uh, those are inventive. Uh, yeah. The Black Mambas and the Batitude. Uh, but 24 18, a great game for the Powder Puff game and uh, all sorts of uh, festivities. As we understand it, the 2003 Mingus Marauders are in town for their 20 year reunion. Hopefully, they're going to fill out the stands for homecoming 2023 as well. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to look at some season stats from the Deer Valley Skyhawks and uh, look at some last games as well and look at the Mingus Marauders, see how they match up when we return to the cave here at Mingus Union High School after this. All Price Insurance on Main Street in Cottonwood is your local insurance provider for personal and commercial insurance. Call and compare over 150 different insurance companies for home, auto, commercial, RV, motorcycle, boat, or ATV. Specialty insurance and insurance bonds are no problem at All Price Insurance in Cottonwood. People often refer to Larry Green Chevrolet as the people place. Keeping that reputation is a priority in the community and with every customer that comes through the door. Larry Green Chevrolet, we're better and we'll prove it. If you're in the market for a new or pre-owned car, truck, van, or SUV, you'll find our selection extensive and the sales team professional and courteous. Visit Larry Green Chevrolet just off Highway 260 next to Walmart or LarryGreenChevrolet.com. Choose the region's most comprehensive heart program. Choose care close to home. Choose world-class surgeons. Choose Northern Arizona Healthcare. Choose 
Choose precision. Choose innovation. Choose robotic-assisted knee and hip replacement. Choose Northern Arizona Healthcare. For 30 years, Rock Zoo screen printers have provided Northern Arizona with clean, crisp, quality screen printing. They work with you to make the right choices in creating the right artwork and message to put forth your best image. Choose from brand name products and even fashion forward designs, including caps, tees, sweatshirts, polos, and jackets. Make Rock Zoo your choice for work in sports uniforms, workwear, resort wear, and more. Find out more at ROKZOOTEES.com. Rock Zoo screen printers in Cottonwood, where clothing comes to rock. Call Rick or Scott Stokes at Sun Country Custom Woodworks about cabinets for every purpose and every budget. Sun Country Custom Woodworks can custom build cabinets for your dream kitchen or bath, adding tremendous value to your home. Organize the garage and store stuff right with a call to Sun Country. And ask about money-saving options, including modular cabinet choices. You know, your cabinets may not be from this century. For ideas, start at suncountrywoodworks.com. Deer Valley comes to visit the Mingus Marauders here. Deer Valley and the Marauders both 2-2 two two for homecoming 2023. The Deer Valley squad, the Skyhawks, wearing the white, not at the field yet, waiting for the Mingus Marauders to come back out through the tunnel, which will be awfully uh, fun. Uh, English, their quarterback, is 46 of 74, 517 yards on the season, two touchdowns and a one interception. Very efficient. We're going to see a spread offense from this squad and probably a lot of screens, depending on how aggressive Mingus gets defensively, so they're going to have to watch for that screen altogether. Their main running back is going to be Johnson. 45 carries, 224 yards. He's got 100-plus game and three touchdowns. Leading receivers out there are going to be Williams with 41 yards, Keith with 143 yards, and the leading receiver is Colston with 272 yards. They've got five turnovers uh, on the season for this squad. Um, leading tacklers are going to be Kruziger as well as uh, Wallace and uh, Schwander all with more than 20 tackles on the season. Six takeaways so they are actually plus two in the turnover ratio for this squad here from Deer Valley which is not altogether too bad. Um, last game versus LaJoya was a defensive battle. Yeah it sure was and they held LaJoya to under 100 yards Jeez. rushing and passing so yeah you know the defense is pretty fine tuna and I know La Jolla doesn't bring a lot of power points but still you have to be really good to not let up any points at all um, and like I said they kept La Jolla under 100 yards total. Um, Deer Valley did lose two fumbles uh, they didn't have any takeaways against La Jolla uh, so there's a bright spot maybe the Marauders might have found that on film and said hey we can take advantage here or maybe it was a specific running back right and so you'd key in on that and maybe try to get your paw in there and get the ball out uh, but no Dylan English uh, boy Jackie not a bad QB rating he's not putting the ball up a ton, but last week against La Jolla, an 85% QB rating, no interceptions, that's big, um, just about 100 yards, a yard shy of that, so uh, yeah, Deer Valley might go through that air attack, I know we saw them try that last year as well, uh, Marauders played that pretty well, so um, I'm assuming the coaches and the uh, the team went through last year's film as well, they, they saw the plays that they called against us last year when we were in Deer Valley's house, um, so tonight should be a good game. Well, the Mingus Marauders for the 2023 season. Stokes is being efficient. 20 of 37, 293 yards, three touchdowns, three interceptions on the season. He did not throw an interception last week uh, against Copper Canyon. On the ground, Grijalva and Brulin have become the top backs for the Mingus Marauders. Two, count them, two 100-yard games in a row. Nice. Looking for three nice. in a row out here tonight. Talked with them on the field, and both of them are stoked to uh, be special. able to have that opportunity. Absolutely. Camacho still leads all receivers with 95 yards. He should be available if needed here tonight, Nick, which would be good. He has been out and uh, injured for the last couple of games. Grijalva has uh, 87 yards on four receptions out there, and Ralston has become a target for Stokes as well. The Mingus Marauders have eight turnovers in the season, which is a little bit high, and that has been a problem, probably a key to the game. Calandra leads all uh, tacklers for the Mingus Marauders with 31 total tackles. 
tackles. Following him is going to be Latham, the other linebacker with 22, and Leckington has 14 for the Mingus Marauders. Bowers leads all players in sacks with four for the Mingus Marauders. Eight takeaways, but eight giveaways, so a turnover ratio. They got it back to a zero, which is not too bad. And so uh, certainly looking to see the Mingus Marauders take advantage of that here tonight. Last week against Copper Canyon, they could almost do no wrong. Yeah, and boy, the Marauders really got the best of Copper Canyon. I mean, I, I'm bummed I, I missed that one. Another big win for the Marauders, and that put us at 2-2, two and two, which yep. tonight is that break-even game. Both teams are 2-2 two and two tonight, but yeah, Jackie, last week, um, the Marauders, uh, 155 was Rain Stokes' uh, QB rating. So really, really good. The Cannon got gotcha. you. Yeah, uh, the Cannon does not get me. I just, I think I'm used to it by now. Here I comes just, the Marauders. How are you not used to it? Because <laughs> I wasn't expecting I was waiting to I see the, the Marauders come out before the Cannon go off, but uh, here come the Mingus Marauders as they are in the left touchdown zone out there where they visited an awful lot last week against Copper Canyon. Yeah, seriously. Rushing, like you just said, a couple hundred yard uh, hundred yard games for our running backs. Uh, Grijalva over 100 yards. Bruin over 100 yards. That's so exciting, especially before you get into that region play. You want to have a couple big breakout games like that, and that's exactly what they're doing. So uh, in the air, the Marauders uh, had 71 yards passing and on the ground, 268 yards rushing. So, hey, they were able to get it done against Copper Canyon, and uh, hopefully can bring that to the cave tonight. Well, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to have a special treat. In fact, we're going to have the choir in here to sing the national anthem, which is going to be pretty awesome. So hopefully we can get them on camera here with us. And uh, we're going to take a break. When we return, we should have the coin toss and the national anthem coming up after this. <laughs> I'm Chris. And I'm Tandy, owners of Taylor Waste. We're homegrown in the Verde Valley and nearly your last local choice. We want to be your first choice for residential and small business garbage service. Get a free month service when you make the switch to Taylor Waste. And enjoy monthly service as low as $16 per month. Visit TaylorWaste.com for more information. Or to start service, call Taylor Waste at 649-2662. Taylor Waste, service tailored to your needs. The right vehicles, the right people, the right price. Make Jones Ford of Verde Valley the right place to buy. Choose from our new in-stock Ford selection or custom order just the way you want it. Buy pre-owned with peace of mind with Jones Ford's lifetime powertrain warranty at no extra cost. Plus, drive a little, save a lot. Jones Ford is your tax advantage destination. So, for the right vehicles at the right price, make the right choice. Jones Ford Verde Valley, family owned and operated for over half a century. Just off I-17 in Camp Verde. Yavapai College has many degree and certificate programs to get you on track to a rewarding, well-paying career in a variety of industries such as healthcare, manufacturing, construction, elementary education, and art. Fall semester starts on August 15th, so there's still time to register. Visit us online today at yc.edu slash admission to connect with your future career. Well, the Deer Valley Skyhawks coming out to the field here. They've got 12 minutes on the clock. We're ready for the coin toss out here, as well as our national anthem, as we have uh, the choir for the Mingus Marauders sitting in our press box, which is pretty awesome. And uh, they are going to be singing the national anthem. Okay, everybody wave. Everybody wave. There, there we, we go. go. Packed in here. They're going to sing the national anthem when it becomes their turn. But until we get to that point, yeah, I know that we're supposed to do our coin toss first. And we want to go through our uh, eye on the game as well and announce our uh, our officials here today and the eye on the game is brought to you by Reese's Tire. Look for discounts, coupons and rebates on tires, wheels and automotive services at Reese's Tire.com. Locally owned, Reese's Tire and Automotive Tire Pros will not be beat. You want to ask about 6 month and 12 month no interest financing and options, even for no credit options, go to uh, Reese's Tire.com for more details. Who are our officials here today? Jackie, our referee 
tonight will be Perry Hike. Our umpire is Chet Teague. Head linesman is William Hammett. Line judge is Tanner Holmes. And our back judge is going to be Eric Sanders tonight. And it's going to be Latham. It's going to be Hernandez, Senna, and Grijalva out as the captains for the Mingus Marauders as the State Farm Jennifer Griffin coin toss is coming up. And of course, Jennifer Griffin, you want to stop by and see her for all of your insurance and financial needs at 545 South Main Street in Cottonwood. That's directly across from Walgreens. You can check them out online at www.jenismysfagent for State Farm SFAgent.com or you can call 634-7680. And, of course, the Mingus Marauders, the last couple of games, have won the toss and uh, have elected to kick off. I think that's what Mingus likes to do. They like to get the ball first in the second half, yeah? Yep, and that is exactly what we're doing tonight. As Isaiah Latham says, we are going to defer. So we will receive and Latham in the says, second half. We want to go that way. Yep. yep. Marauders play defense first here on homecoming, and you bet they got to be fired up, ready to get that ball back and get some points on the board for homecoming. Sweet! Homecoming 2023, and of course at halftime we will have all of the homecoming festivities, the wannabe and hopeful kings and queens and nominees and all of that fun stuff. How exciting. So of course uh, coming here for homecoming, you remember your own homecomings here at Megas Union High School, right? Oh, so fun. So many activities, the pep rallies. I mean, Jackie, those are the times, right? <laughs> Coach Young was jumping off big ladders onto big pads, and it was <laughs> just getting everybody hype and fired up, and then of course you got your dance is coming up and so yeah what a, what a special time of year for these players and the students. I remember when uh, you got to smash the car right? You know there was no car smashing. Oh. There was no car smashing. All right ladies and gentlemen our national anthem coming up with the Mingus Marauder Choir. Congratulations to our Mingus Marauder Choir. Good job, guys. Way to go. Well okay. done, everybody. You're going to have to go to YouTube Verde Valley TV and go watch yourselves. Okay? YouTube Verde Valley TV, go watch yourselves. And, of course, that's where you're going to watch the game here tonight. And we are on radio as well, KYBC AM 1600 and 96.3 FM. The Mingus Marauders are going to be kicking off. So defensively, they're going to start off defensively. Quarterbacks uh, for the Mingus Marauders. Um, Felix is going to take over at a quarterback position. Camacho's not quite back for, back for that yet. Defensive ends will be Hernandez and Bowers. Nose guard will be Watson. And Choate will play a defensive tackle, although they will trade him out quite a bit as he plays center and goes the other way as well. Linebackers for the Mingus Marauders, Senna and Leckington on the outside. Inside are going to be the, the tackle pair, the Calandra and Latham team, and Brulin will be our free safety out here. Stokes will be kicking off for the Mingus Marauders. Going from left to right across your radio dial out there. And here we go, Jackie. Homecoming game. Huge game for both teams. Both teams 2-2 two and two right now. And Marauders trying to pull the 3-2 and two on homecoming night. 
Stokes is looking to kick off, approaches the ball. He'll put it up in the air. He'll come down to the near side. One of the front backs takes it at about the 16-yard line, puts a hand down, but finds a room, gets to the outside, gets tackled out there. Number 34 comes up to make the tackle for the Mingus Marauders. And... Uh, they're going to start just at about the 30-yard line. Good start, good containment there. Uh, running the ball there, trying to get to the edge on the far side of the field, but the Marauders do a good job with containing there. Dano cuts him off out there and is able to stop it. Here come uh, the Skyhawks to the line, led by quarterback Dylan English. He's 46 for 74, 517 yards, two backs in the backfield. Two receivers to the near side, one to the top side, and puts another man into motion. That'll be three receivers to the near side. There's the snap, and they will quick throw it to the near side. Has some room. Number two with the ball gets tackled. Lathan gets the tackle, but after a good gain and 13 yards out there, the reception made it by Brody Keith. Yeah, boy, that's a quick start for Deer Valley. Nice job by the big guy Latham to cut him off and use an angle to get to him and not let him get any more than that first down, but it's a, a really good play call from Deer Valley right off the bat here. Good blocking by the receivers out there. Three receivers to the top side. Now the far side of the field, one back in the backfield. And uh, there is the snap. English looks to hand it off, throws the quick slant, and it's off the mark. His intended receiver was Keith again and couldn't hit him. Yeah, and that was a, a whistle there by English. That was a really fast throw. So you're saying he had English on the ball? There was, there was definitely some English okay, on there. Okay, all right. <laughs> We're going to have fun with that one. <laughs> So English comes in wearing number nine. He is a senior, 5'11", 180 pounds. Yeah, and keep an eye, Jackie, both these passes we've seen have been really quick. The slant, the quick passes, and the, uh, the draws are going to be staples for this squad. Mingus shows blitz. They put a man in motion. That's Keith. Moves for the right side, still moving. They don't call it, and they're going to throw downfield and had a man off the hands. Had enough for a first down out there. Open on the pass was uh, number 21. That's going to be Teddy Johnson. As That was definitely good enough for a first down out there. He had to lay out for a little bit, but... Yeah, and that was a really good play fake on this short side here. I got lost a little bit. I thought that handoff was to the running back short side, but it wasn't. So that was a really good play fake by English. Three receivers to the top side, third and 10 from the 43-yard line, just underway. 11-11 left to go in quarter number one. No score on uh, the board. English will take the snap. He'll move to the right side, throws, has a man. It should be short of the first down as it was a comebacker, and that might bring up a fourth down. Nine yards out there to Colston, their leading receiver, but it will bring a fourth and one. Do you go for it at this point? Whew, what a gutsy call, Jack. Yeah. Well, that's a gamble right there. I, I'd flip a coin. Flip a coin, maybe ask a friend. <laughs> <laughs> call in a lifeline, is that what <laughs> yeah, it is? Yeah, exactly. Okay, well, it looks like they're going to go for it. Same setup, two backs in the backfield, at least to start. And uh, there is the snap. They will hand it off. And uh, Marcus Johnson will pick up the first down as he weaves his way through traffic. Picks up three, needed one. Yeah, their first running play of the game. And, of course, it's set up nicely because it's been all passes, right? So as a defense, you're kind of getting used to seeing passes. And then all of a sudden, there's a run. Um, so that's just a good job by Deer Valley setting that one up. And, and Deer Valley moving the chains. 34 nothing last year against the Mingus Marauders. Mingus took uh, care of business against the Deer Valley squad. Deer Valley starting the game with a drive. Now on the Mingus Marauder 45-yard line, first and 10. English takes the snap, fakes the handoff, throws out to Keith. Keith goes to the outside, and Brulin comes up to make the hit. He stays on his feet, and the flag comes out. And yeah, that's a nice job by Brulin. Man, did he use a really good angle and cut him off, but yeah, let's see what this flag's for. Six yards on the reception out there to Keith. And you can see him get to the edge. Yeah, nice job, Bruin. Oh, just, and maybe you know, it might be. Yeah, could be. And Bruin just got him outside. So it might have just been a little bit of a late hit. Yeah, we've seen it not called, but we've seen it called. So you just got to be careful and let up a little bit. So six yards on the reception, and then 
The penalty yards now put them down to the 25 yard line. English takes the snap and they hand it off. Johnson trying to get to the outside, looking to outrun the Mingus Marauders, gets tackled out there by Leckington. Out, dives for the legs, gets him, but a decent gain of four or five. Yeah, really nice job by Leckington. I didn't think he was gonna get there, and Leckington using his size to get Johnson's feet from out from under him and stopped what could have looked really good for the Skyhawks. If Johnson would have got that edge, he might have been gone. So a nice job by Leckington, keeping it short. Three officially on the board here for Johnson as the new line of scrimmage just outside the red zone at the 22-yard line, second and seven. English, two backs in the backfield, takes the snap, looks to throw, throws quickly, and it's tipped and almost oh. intercepted out there off the hands of the receiver into a crowd of red shirts, and it did not go Mingus's way. Yeah, you see Latham out there. They're just, oh, so close. Uh, those are tough, though. That's kind of the tip drill. You don't really know if that's going to bounce your way, but you got to be ready when it does. Yeah, those are hard to practice, too. I mean, to, to get that kind of a tip. 9-11 left to go. First quarter action. Third and seven now from the Mingus Marauder 22-yard line. Already a fourth down conversion on this drive, so you got to imagine Deer Valley would go for it in two-down territory. English takes the snap, looks to throw, throws the fade, and it's too high. And on the defense out there for the Mingus Marauders was Xavier Thompson. And Thompson had good defense out there. Looking to throw the fade, but ended up throwing it high. Clock stops with 9.06 left to go. Yep, Thompson did a really good job of just sticking with his wide receiver there, not letting him get behind him, and not letting him get a great chance at that ball. So fourth down now. Mingus brings up and forces their second fourth down attempt here uh, of the drive. Fourth and seven. Johnson in the backfield here with English. English, two receivers to the top, two for the bottom. Keith will go in motion to the top. There's the snap, looks to throw, throws, has a man, it's almost picked off. Coming up to break that up. Oh, Leckington, Leckington does it. What a read. What a really nice read by Max Leckington. And you can tell he's watched game film all week. That was awesome. He watched English drop back and he knew exactly where he was gonna throw that ball. He was waiting for that comebacker and it was actually yeah. thrown early the receiver didn't look back at the ball at all. And Mingus, the Mingus Marauders will take over. 28 passing yards in the first drive for Dylan English. And here come the Mingus Marauders. Stokes will look to hand it off and hands it off and caught in the backfield and dropped is going to be Brulin. And they start off with a blitz against the Mingus Marauders and Brulin is going to lose three or four. Oh my goodness. Anthony Palmer, the Skyhawks, get you some. First play of the game, the six foot junior was basically back there with Bruin and almost took the handoff. So, boy, oh boy, that's a nice job by the Skyhawks defensive line on the first play for them. Mingus wing formation, one receiver to the top. Nobody's even covering the receiver to the top. Now they get somebody over, and Mingus will hand it off straight up the middle, and uh, getting what he can get is Grijalva as he will pick up the lost yardage and one more and bring up a third and nine from the Mingus Marauder 23-yard line. And it'll be interesting to see what Coach Montebias has lined up for the Marauders here. Third and nine. The playbook's pretty much open. You'd think we might see a pass here. Well, the receiver to the top end, when they first put him out there, nobody was on yeah. him. Had they snapped the ball and thrown it that way, he could still be running. He'd be halfway to Camp Verde by now. Two receivers to the top. They do have coverage. They put a man in motion. That's going to be Brulin. They fake the handoff, and uh, Stokes is going to put it up. Puts it up, and it is caught for a first down. And the Mingus Marauders have the ball out there, and it's going to be Grijalva out of the backfield as he picks up 14 on the reception. Now, what a really nice ball by Rain Stokes. That's really good touch. Uh, great catch by Mikey, but Rain Stokes on the on the scramble, really, to the far side, makes a really nice touch pass, and the Marauders move the chains. Well, good job by Grijalva to actually hang on to the ball because the defensive player tried to grab it away yep. from him yep. and uh, pull it away, taking it uh, out of his hands, and he was able to, he was tackled by the ball, if you will, and he grabbed it away and kept possession. 
So Mingus to get some new sets of downs. There's the snap and the handoff comes to the near side. Grijalva tries to get to the outside, splits the defenders, gets to the 40 and picks up two. Mikey yeah, Mikey here. just trying to, to find the edge, but Deer Valley does a good job containing him right now. Two on the play. Second and, eight, Mingus. Second and eight, the Mingus Marauders with the ball. 6.52 left to go, first quarter action. No score so far. Mingus's first drive, they started on defense and got the Skyhawks to stall out at their own 20, at the Mingus Marauder 22 yard line. And they have now moved it out to the 40, second and eight from the 40. Wing formation, receiver on the near side, and there is the handoff, and Grijalva goes up the middle, keeps the legs rolling, and they do call him down, or was that Bruland? That looked to be Bruland, yeah, and it is. And yeah, boy. Bruin's lucky they called him down. I think he was definitely down because he was laying on top of a defender. But at the end of that play, Bruin goes over the top and then lost the ball at the very end. But he was down, so the Marauders end up with a, a third and manageable. Third and two, manageable indeed, from the 46-yard line. Ming is trying to get their drive continued out here. Stokes under center. Looks to take the snap, there's the snap, looks to throw, has some time, throws the ball and gets his man. And it's gonna be De La Hay out there for the reception as he will pick up good yardage for the Mingus Marauders. And another great pass by Rain Stokes. Great job by that offensive line. You can see all those guys, Watson, Latham, uh, Jahir, Nick Cho, they're all on their blocks that entire time. Reigns is in the pocket. It makes just a, a really nice touch pass again. 22 yards, Stokes is two for two on this dry. Drive 36 yards, the new line of scrimmage is the 32 yard line of the Skyhawks. Mingus Marauders driving with a new set of downs. There's the snap, it's gonna be a handoff coming this side, Brulin cuts back inside and gets tackled by the ball once again. Glad he hung on to it. They're gonna give him forward progress, really good forward progress all the way to the 28, give him four. Yeah, and boy, those are tough yards. Did not look like he got four on that, and that means you know he was working really hard to get them. That's a good job just keeping your feet moving. And yeah, Marauder is really marching here. He was trying to get to the outside, trying to outrace everybody. The outside got cut off, so then he tried to cut back under the defense. And he's so quick, too. Second and six from the 28-yard line. Wing formation once again. Stokes under center, takes the snap and hands it off. Brulin tries the outside, cuts underneath his blocks. He is close to a first down. As he's down to about the 21-yard line, that should be enough for a first down. And how about the patience? You can see on your replay there, Brulin just kind of gets up, gets to that secondary, and literally plants himself, does a little juke move, and then like another juke move right after that. That's really good patience, good awareness from the running back to get right to that first down marker. So why do we do the ladder drill? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's why we do the ladder drill. There's the snap and a quick handoff up the middle. Grijalva broke it for a moment and then uh, the secondary catches up with him inside of the 15 down to the 14. Yeah, and not before the Marauders get a nice push off that offensive line. That's a great first play from scrimmage. And I mean, that's how you want to do it right there. Right? You got to have a good running game. And the Marauders passing game's on right now. And right now they're picking up the running game as well on their first drive. Second and three are the Mingus Marauders from the 14. This drive started at their own 22-yard line. 3.54 on the clock, still zeros on the scoreboard. First quarter action. Two receivers, one to either side, and Stokes is going to keep the ball. Has the opportunity to run. Has a blocker out in front of him. Takes advantage of the block and into the end zone. What a phenomenal pancake block in front of him as Stokes carries it in for 14 yards and the touchdown, first touchdown of uh, the uh, homecoming for the Mingus Marauders. Yeah, so nice. And that's Isaiah Latham out there. What a lead block. The, the big man moving fast out there. Gets to the pylon, makes a nice block, and his quarterback runs right behind him into the end zone. It's really good awareness by Stokes there, too. So far, the Marauders' offense on this very first drive, Jack, he looks really sharp. 
Well, a couple of third down conversions, and Mingus does set it up to go for the extra point. A uh, long snapper, Hyatt Cannon, comes in, and he has been he's been dinged up, but he comes out for the long snap. There is the long snap. It is down. The kick is up. The kick is powerful. The kick is straight. The kick is good. Hernandez dots the eye, gets the extra point. Mingus takes a 7 to nothing lead with 341 left to go in the first quarter. We're back after this. When you're looking for a plumber, no matter the job, call Divest Plumbing. From energy-saving tankless water systems to whatever remodel project you have in mind, from the simple to the exotic, Divest Plumbing prides themselves on quality workmanship and efficiency. For honest and fair prices and plumbing problems done right the first time, call Divest Plumbing at 928-567-8755 or find them online at d-bestplumbing.com. When you're looking for back here at Mingus Union High School, the Marauders strike first. A 14-yard run by Stokes out of the quarterback position. I think he wanted to throw, tucked it, and had a block around in front of him. I'd follow Latham anywhere. Seriously. Yeah, what a lead blocker. Give me a ticket for that ride right there. Latham clears the path. 7 nothing, and Mingus will kick off for the second time here tonight. Coach Monsabaya said he wanted to do a lot of kickoffs tonight. There it is. Short comes to the near side. Off the top of the hands of the receiver and out of bounds. Oh, man, wow. that is so disappointing. I hate that. As uh, Teddy Johnson kept backing up and then had to catch it kind of above his head, and it went off his hands and then out of bounds inside the 20. Works well for the Mingus Marauders. I was going to say, uh, being the color guy for Mingus, Jackie, yeah, I love to see that right there. That's going to pin the Skyhawks deep, but yeah, as a football fan, that's just kind of a, a cringing moment. He just, he just dropped in, it goes out of bounds, but... Hey, that's going to leave a long field for the Skyhawks and a good opportunity for the Marauders here. Wind starts to kick up going from left to right across uh, the field out here as Old Glory is waving in full stride. So we're getting a little bit of wind into the face of uh, the Deer Valley Skyhawks. English comes out bunch formation now this time. They put Keith in motion, and they will hand it off to Marcus, and in for the tackle quickly for the Mingus Marauders is going to be Latham. First tackle for loss in the game for the Mingus Marauders. He'll tackle him at the 15-yard line, loss of two. Yeah, and that's a really good start for Isaiah Latham. We've already been calling him a few times tonight. It's a great start to homecoming game. This is just the first few drives as well. But he is looking like he's been out there all night. Second and 12. No, he looks well rested. <laughs> Hasn't been all Looks night. like he knows these plays. That's true. Spread formation once again. Showing blitz on the Mingus Marauders. There it is. They're coming. They throw the screen to the far side. It works. And almost catching him up front uh, was a great job. But bouncing away from it was the receiver. And Calandra will clean it up for a short gain. Number 21 on the reception out there. That's Teddy Jones. Johnson as he gets out of the tackle for would-be loss and then Calandra cleans him up. Yeah, and you saw the replay there. That's a, a really nice job of Calandra to get off that block and then make the play on the sidelines because if Calandra can't get off that block, that's at least going to be a first down for this guy, Hawk. So another good job by the Marauders defense. Well, that's how you counter pressure is, is you throw those quick screens to counter the, the blitzes. Three receivers to the near side. Quarterback looks to throw, throws quickly, and it's going to be Keith out there tackled high by Calandra and did not get the helmet, which is fantastic. I, I thought for sure we might see a flag on that one. We did not. So Keith only picks up a couple, and that's going to bring up a fourth down for the Skyhawks from their own 22-yard line, and it might be punting time. Yeah, you'd think it's going to be punting time there. And, and then, yeah, Jackie Brody's uh, a, a sophomore for the Skyhawks, really fast, but he's only standing at five foot four. So Calandra doesn't have much to, unless Calandra bends down low, the tackle's going to be up high. He's just going to have to watch out for that helmet. Well, you're supposed to tackle low, but that is getting low. Set up for the punt are the Skyhawks. There's the snap. The snap is good. 
A little bit of pressure, but he gets it off, comes down. Bruland's going to have to let it bounce, and it takes a Mingus Marauder bounce. Oh, boy. All yeah. the way back inside the 45-yard line to the 43-yard line. Mingus will start with phenomenal field position here to start their second drive, already leading 7 to nothing. Yeah, so, so far, defense, offense, and special teams for the Marauders looking pretty good. Uh, we'll take the, uh, the bounce from the punt. And that's just, lo that's not luck, right? That's skill. Sure. That's skill from the Marauders? Absolutely. That is willing the ball to bounce yeah, your exactly. way. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> sure. We'll, we'll go with that. If, if I don't want to return right. it. Please bounce the other way. Please bounce the other way. Choate hands the ball off to the umpire who puts it down so that Choate could then get it back. And here we go. Second drive for the Mingus Marauders. 117 left to go in quarter number one. Stokes under center, looking to take the snap. There it is, hands it off. Grijalva has a block around in front of him, goes to the outside, gets out of one tackle, but cannot get out of the other two. And uh, will be taken down for a short game. They're gonna mark him forward progress out to the 20. That is a great spot there for Grijalva, all the way to the 40, give him three. Yeah, fantastic tackle by the Skyhawks defense. It's Jacob Kruziger who was there first. I and thought he was going to cut up underneath yeah. Bruland's block, and he didn't. He went back to the outside and tried to outrun the defense. Man, he was close. He was close. Oh, yeah. If he could have uh, broke Kruziger's tackle, missed it by that much. All right, second and seven. Bruland tries the left-hand side, has blockers out in front of him, and will get tackled, leans forward, falls forward for a few more yards, out to the 36-yard line, a gain of four. Third and manageable for the Mingus Marauders. And yeah, nice job by that Marauders offensive line. Latham was at about the 26-yard the line up there, planting somebody on the sidelines. So yeah, he's <laughs> awesome he's pulling. He's pulling. He's getting his steps in today, isn't he? Yeah, and these guys have got to have some confidence and momentum right now, Jackie. And uh, they should. 7-0 the score at the end of quarter number one. The Mingus Marauders leading here for homecoming 2023. We were, we'll be back to the cave here at Mingus Junior High School after this. Often refer to Larry Green Chevrolet as the people place. Keeping that reputation is a priority in the community and with every customer that comes through the door. Larry Green Chevrolet, we're better and we'll prove it. If you're in the market for a new or pre owned car, truck, van, or SUV, you'll find our selection extensive and the sales team professional and courteous. Visit Larry Green Chevrolet just off Highway 260 next to Walmart or LarryGreenChevrolet.com. All Price Insurance on Main Street in Cottonwood is your local insurance provider for personal and commercial insurance. Call and compare over 150 different insurance companies for home, auto, commercial, RV, motorcycle, boat, or ATV. Specialty insurance and insurance bonds are no problem at All Price Insurance in Cottonwood. First quarter stats, Mingus Marauders 36 yards uh, passing, 71 yards on the ground. Mingus 107 yards total in the first quarter for Mingus. And Grijalva will take the handoff, slides through, bounces to the outside. He's got an angle. He's at the 20. He's at the 15. He cuts back at the 10, the 5. And he's striving for the end zone. It doesn't get there. Taken out of bounds at the 2-yard line. Man, he wanted it. He wanted it so bad, Jackie. What a good run by Mikey. That's that's a great way to get to the edge. Makes a couple Skyhawks miss. And man, did he want it. Right at the end, he juked two plays, two Skyhawks right out of their cleats. And he was almost able to get in. And then a third Skyhawk came in and stopped them from getting in the end zone. All right, they want to get the clock rolling again. 11.47 left to go. There is the snap. And Grijalva is stood up at the line of scrimmage. They're going to give him progress for about one. Six carries, 51 yards for Grijalva. That was a good old-fashioned scrum right there. Yes, it was. I, I, I kept looking for the <laughs> bright yellow and blue rugby uniforms yeah, out there. Yeah, seriously. There was a little bit of back and forth, some lateral shifting as a group. So they officially make it the two-yard line now. So that big long run was 33 yards. So 
second and goal from the two, and Stokes is going to hand it off the other way. What a fantastic counter for the Mingus Marauders is getting in as Ralston with the two-yard touchdown run and his first touch of the game works out to be six more points and a 13-point lead. That's a really, really nice play call. Ralston just pretty much goes untouched, so got to give all your credit to your offensive line. Wonderful play call, and the Marauders find themselves with a good lead now here on homecoming night. I love it when Mingus scores and all the lights to the fire truck go off. That is pretty awesome. I love the cannon a little bit more than that. Uh, you do, yeah. I do. Second extra point attempt out here by Hernandez. He is one for one. And the snap, Senna with the hold. The kick is up. The kick is good. And Hernandez, the offensive defensive lineman and point scorer out there for the Mingus Marauders. Mingus is up 14-0, just underway. Second quarter, we're back after this. Choose the region's most comprehensive heart program. Choose care close to home. Choose world-class surgeons. Choose Northern Arizona Healthcare. Choose precision. Choose innovation. Choose robotic assisted knee and hip replacement. Choose Northern Arizona Healthcare. Mingus going from right to left across your screen and your radio dial. Stokes will be kicking off uh, for the third time here in the first half. Mingus with a 14-0 lead for homecoming 2023 over the Skyhawks. Stokes approaches, pops it up in the air, and they're going to go to the right-hand side, and it will stay and go out of bounds. Oh, I thought he was going to get it to stop right there at the 22-yard line. If Stokes got that to stop right there, I'd be going to ask him if he could help me with my eight and nine iron. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> I, I thought the same thing, too. That right. was really, really close. That ball just kind of died. <laughs> you know, the Skyhawks were over there like, oh, go out, go out, go out, hurry up, hurry up, go, go, go. Yep. yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, another just great play by the special teams. So the Skyhawks will take over, of course, at the 35 with the ball going out of bounds. Skyhawks, first half, 33 yards in the air, first half, first quarter, four yards on the ground. So Mingus has held Deer Valley to 37 yards. Their first drive was decent in the air, had several first downs, stalled out at the 22-yard line. Put a man in motion. It's going to be Johnson, and they're going to throw to Keith out to the outside. He gets away from one blocker and outruns others. Here comes the safety, and knocking him out of bounds is going to be Thompson. But a good run after the catch as they pick up tremendous yards in the first down. Biggest play from the line of scrimmage here so far. Yeah, really nice job by Xavier Thomas. Way to save the touchdown right there and, and chase down Johnson. That's a really good job by Xavier. 37 yards on the little screen pass. Mingus was in the backfield, unable to make the tackle out there. And number two slipped away. Brody Keith just slipped away for a big gainer. There's the snap. They're going to throw another quick one to Keith the other way. This one doesn't go nearly as well as he'll pick up two and get tackled by the Mingus Marauders. And that's another one of those quick plays that the Skyhawks set up. And with the Marauders, you got to be ready for those. Those are only taken. I mean, English has gotten in his hands for just literally maybe over two seconds. And then he lets go of it. So that's more of a that's more of a pitch, more of a run game than it is a passing game. When you're throwing the ball left and right right there at the line of scrimmage. Yep. I mean that's really more of a run game. Um, just trying to get to the outside as fast as you possibly can. Out of shotgun. English puts one man in motion. They fake the handoff. They throw. They throw downfield. They have a man. And into the end zone for the touchdown. 22-yard touchdown reception out there to Jacob Kreisiger. Kreisiger. And he caught it with the fingertips. Got behind the defense. And Deer Valley strikes and puts points up on the board. Something they could not do last year against the Mingus Marauders. Yeah, and what a ball by English. If you were just able to see the replay on Verde Valley Television, that was a really nice throw by English. Looking for the snap out here. 
Colston's the holder. The kick is up. The kick is good. And the extra point out there by Dylan English. How about that? He throws the touchdown, turns around, kicks the extra point, and they cut the lead in half. Mingus will get the ball back with a seven-point lead. 14-7, 10 minutes left to go in quarter number two. We're back after this. 30 years, Rock Zoo screen printers have provided Northern Arizona with clean, crisp, quality screen printing. They work with you to make the right choices in creating the right artwork and message to put forth your best image. Choose from brand name products and even fashion forward designs, including caps, tees, sweatshirts, polos, and jackets. Make Rock Zoo your choice for work in sports uniforms, workwear, resort wear, and more. Find out more at ROKZOOTEES.com. Rock Zoo screen printers in Cottonwood, where clothing comes to rock. The extra point by Dylan English was good, and then Marcus Johnson's going to turn around and kick off. So Mingus will get their first return opportunity for the day. And there is a short kick coming to the near side. It'll be taken by Machado. Machado tries to weave his way through the middle and will get across the 35 out to about the 37-yard line. So about a 14-yard return for Xavier Machado. And Mingus will start with pretty decent field position. Yeah, and that's a good awareness and good vision there by Machado trying to break in. He was he was close, but uh, Skyhawks do a good job of pinching in last minute and uh, giving the Marauders a nice size field. And hey, this is just another chance for the offense to get some momentum here and get a nice drive going again. 36 yard line, the line of scrimmage. Brulin caught from behind, still on his feet, and then taken down at the 30 yard line. They're going to give him progress out to the 31. That's where you need that breakaway jersey, as he'll lose five on the run blitz against the Mingus Marauders. Lots of five on the play. Yeah, that's just an excellent job at the Skyhawks defensive line. Immediately getting pressure. And boy, he was bringing Bruin down as soon as he got that handoff. So that's just a good job by the Skyhawks there. So Leckington comes in, playing a tight end position. He can catch the ball for sure. De La Haye with a touchdown reception. He comes in, and we'll see what the Mingus Marauders do with this. And there's the handoff. Up the middle goes Brulin. Brulin gets back what he lost and then gets slammed to the ground at the 40-yard line. Brulin gets up from that and keeps running. He's like, I wasn't down. So when your face mask is in the ground, is that considered down? <laughs> not to Bruin. Uh, no, apparently not. I love like, it. My, my knee was not down. My head, my helmet hit the ground. <laughs> that's a tenacious running back, and that's, that's who you want running the football. I love that. I ain't down until I say I'm down. <laughs> I like it. This, the face mask doesn't count. Let me keep going. Right. Uh, good for him. Third and five from the Mingus Marauder 40-yard line. 8.30 left to go. Mingus leading 14-7. to seven. Two receivers to the near side for the Mingus Marauders. He's going to put Bruland in motion. There's the snap. They fake the handoff to him. Coming to the near side is going to be Stokes. Stokes gets around the corner and, ooh, tackled hard right at about the 35-yard line. And it should bring up a fourth down. Down, do you go for it here at your own 45-yard line? Well, if you're going to let me call it, Jackie, I I'm going to go for it. Offense have got some great momentum. I feel like we've been moving the ball uh, quite well. So I I'd be going for it fourth and short. I know you're in your own territory, but you're close to midfield. you got some momentum. Well, it looks like they are going to go for it. And oh, they get him to jump. Wow. Jumping across the line is number 51. That's Dylan Buss. And the hard count gets it. Now, what discipline. And that's exactly. Remember the first couple games you call in the season? Always the first couple games you get some jumping off sides and stuff like that. And But, man, that's how you execute. That's great discipline. Marauders just get a first down for pretty much free and having good discipline. So nice job on the offense. First penalty against the visiting Skyhawks. Mingus has one. The Skyhawks have one. Mingus with a new set of downs right at the 50-yard line. Stokes is under center, takes the snap, and hands it off. Grijalva weaves his way through and keeps his legs rolling. Good gain on first down of eight yards. Man, I'll take that all day long. Yep, that'll keep the clock going. and it Always is a confidence booster for your offensive line. I'll tell you that. When you're getting over five yards rushing on the ground, that's, you know, you got some confidence. You're going into that huddle. You know that the next play, you're going to be able to handle your blocks. An injured player on the field out there, that is Jacob Kreisiger, which is 
one of their playmakers. In fact, he caught the touchdown earlier, and he is getting some medical attention out there on the field. Hopefully, that is not seriously serious. That's going to be that's a uh, a two-way player for Deer Valley out here today. We're going to take a quick break with him. We'll return to Mingus Union High School in 30 seconds. Call Rick or Scott Stokes at Sun Country Custom Woodworks about cabinets for every purpose and every budget. Sun Country Custom Woodworks can custom build cabinets for your dream kitchen or bath, adding tremendous value to your home. Organize the garage and store stuff right with a call to Sun Country. And ask about money-saving options, including modular cabinet choices. You know, your cabinets may not be from this century. For ideas, start at suncountrywoodworks.com. Well, they helped Kreisiger off the field. He did not look like he was putting any weight on that right leg. Grijalva has a first down up the middle, and he gets a little bit of help from his offensive line, and he's still going. Talk about a scrum as he's inside the 30 down to the 28-yard line. So can we get Nick Choate some yards with that, Jackie? That was an awesome job. Uh, like you said, the offensive line just kind of carried Mikey downfield. That was awesome. Well, when an offensive lineman actually grabs you and throws you forward yeah. out of yeah. the tackle. I'm I'm not sure that that's actually legal, um, but you know what? We'll give Choate an assist. How it's about homecoming. that? Homecoming. Yeah, we'll give it to him. Yeah, we'll, we'll give him a homecoming assist. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that, that's being a wingman. How about that? First down, new set of chains for the Mingus Marauders at the 29-yard line. There's the snap, and uh, they do give it to the first man up. Going through is Grijalva, and he's still on his feet and got tackled by the field out there. He picks up a first down and about 14 yards and somehow lost his footing as he was going toward the corner and, and uh, possible touchdown land. Yeah, and that's a great job by Grijalva to break a couple tackles right at the line of scrimmage. And then, like you said, just couldn't keep his feet towards the end of that play. But nonetheless, great offensive play, and the Marauders moved the chains, and more importantly, in the red zone. Full crowd out here for Mingus on homecoming. Nearly standing room only. There is the snap, and Mingus will bring it the other way. Brulin cuts up underneath a block, picks up a couple, and will then get stood up and stopped. They blow him down right at about the 14-yard uh, line, maybe 13-yard line, so... Give him four on the carry. And that was Dylan Buss out there. For, uh, the Skyhawks causing a, a bunch of trouble on that offensive line for the Marauders. Big junior, 6'2", number 51 for the Skyhawks, Jackie. He's a beast out there. Skyhawks have 10 seniors, a lot of sophomores. They have more sophomores than seniors on the squad out here. Second and seven for the Mingus Marauders. There is the snap, goes the opposite way. A fantastic fake for Brulin. Brulin gets caught by the ankle. Oh, he was so close to touchdown out there, and he may have enough for a first down, though. That was a great fake by Stokes. That was one of the best fakes I have seen by Stokes. It'll be first and goal from the six. Yeah, we get to see the replay there, and wow, you are right, Jack. He, he faked the handoff to Senna, and Senna sold the run as well, and that's just... I mean, a, a collaboratively great play for the Marauders' offense. Yeah, you got it. You've got to run. You got to run your play out, whether you got the ball or yep. not. That was a perfect example of that. Needed seven, picked up eight, first and goal. The Mingus Marauders give it back to Brulin. Brulin tries the right hand side, and he gets down to the two. Yeah, and that's what's nice about getting the first down right in inside the 10-yard line there is you get a few plays to try to find the end zone. And we have a timeout on the field and a player down. Trying to figure out who is down out there, and it appears to be a red jersey. That'll be a Mingus. Like Bruland. Might be, yeah, could, could be Bruland, Bruland right there at the two-yard line. And, oh, that, that'll be costly for the Mingus Marauders. He plays so many different positions out there, and he is not... He's not happy right now. No, hopefully he's going to be all right. But, yeah, he, he looks in distress right now. And, of course, it comes after a couple of really nice runs he had. So the Marauders are going to have to plug someone else in. And the next man up has been the Marauders thing. I mean, they've been successful doing that. So we're going to take a break with him. Hopefully Brudlin's going to be okay. And we're going to check on him here in just a moment. We'll return to Mingus Union High School. 434 left to go in quarter number two. Mingus driving at the two, leading 14-7. We're back after this. 
Yavapai College has many degree and certificate programs to get you on track to a rewarding, well-paying career in a variety of industries such as healthcare, manufacturing, construction, elementary education, and art. Fall semester starts on August 15th, so there's still time to register. Visit us online today at yc.edu slash admission to connect with your future career. Back here, the Mingus Marauders kind of uh, huddled up here and uh, trying to wait to see how things go with Brulin as he's getting some medical attention out there. Uh, took back-to-back -back handoffs and went around the right-hand side, got spun down. Uh, I, I couldn't tell, Nick, I don't know if you could, whether he got rolled up on with the tackle or or what might have happened. But he he looked, in, uh, looked to be in some discomfort and hopefully they're gonna be standing him up here. And they are going to be standing him up and they are going to help him off the field as he is putting no weight on, on his uh, on his legs out there. And so. I didn't quite catch it. It obviously looks like his, uh, his lower half there. You're right, he's putting no pressure on that right leg. So we'll try to get an update there from Bruin, but hopefully he's gonna be okay. He looks in some distress now. The young man did a phenomenal job so far tonight running the ball. Hopefully he is going to be okay. Let's see if we can get a report on him, especially at halftime, if there's a way to do that. Back to action. It is second and goal for the Mingus Marauders from the two. And Mingus will take the handoff and uh, driving his way toward the goal line, but not getting in. And it looks to be Grijalva. Grijalva. Latham was giving the touchdown signal out there. I love it. They didn't quite give it to us, but <laughs> you got to try, right? I'm, I remember trying a lot. That's that is definitely by a nose. You can tell on Verde Valley yeah, yeah. TV that is that is four that is third and goal from the inches. But unfortunately, I mean Grijalva picked up two yards, but you can only give him one because you can't have a two-inch touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, right. So. <laughs> Mingus will come back up for third and goal, and they will hand it off. Grijalva just puts oh, yeah. his head down and drives. Easy, great push from the offensive line. Big Nick Choke snaps that ball and moves the Skyhawks back. Two of those linemen right backwards. Nice job of the Marauders to find some pay dirt again. One yard run officially by Grijalva. He earned most of that, uh, that, that one yard on the previous run, but this one will count as a one yard run and a touchdown. Mingus takes and extends the lead to 20 to seven, 347 left to go in quarter number two. Mingus does get the ball back first in the second half. Hernandez is out for the extra point attempt once again. And we get a flag thrown and thrown at the center. I think it hit the center. It did hit the center. I'm sorry. A false start against the Mingus Marauders, so it's going to be a little bit harder for the extra point as they set the ball at the seven yard line, eight yard line. Hernandez says, That's okay, I got this. It's the same angle. He's got a big leg. Cannon with the snap. Cannon with the snap. There it is. Senna. High snap. Puts the ball down and it will get covered out there, but it'll be a dead ball. So no extra point out there. Senna could not get his hands on the high snap. So the, the lead remains 13 out here. We'll take a break. Mingus with their third, fourth kickoff coming up right after this. Starting in the late 1920s, Grandpa Gettle and his brothers laid the groundwork for what would become a family legacy. Almost 100 years and 100 patents later, Gettle's High Desert Mechanical continues to raise the bar of quality heating, cooling, and plumbing products and services throughout Yavapai County and Flagstaff. Call Gettle's High Desert Mechanical Heating, Air Conditioning, and Plumbing at 567-2200 or online at goettlshdm.com. Providing solutions for your comfort. Don't settle. Get Gettle's and go Mirage. Stokes set to kick off once again. Approaches, pops it up, kicks it to that right side, taking it about the 19 yard line. Bringing it back, trying to get to the outside, has some blockers, trying to get to the edge. Mingus cuts him off, he cuts up underneath one. Great field position for the Skyhawks. A fantastic return by Teddy Johnson out there. 
They're trying to. I think they're trying to keep the ball away from Marcus Johnson for the return. But uh, Teddy uh, did a great job as he uses his blocks, gets all the way back to the outside, and then outruns and then undercuts and picks up another seven yards there. Yep, the senior for the Skyhawks doing a good job on the returns, trying to give his offense some good field position, and he does. I mean, they're not pinned back by any means. 94 passing yards for Dylan English here in the first half. And a penalty. It's going to be a personal foul against the Mingus Marauders, and that is going to put the ball in Mingus Marauder territory all the way down. Let's see where he stops. He's going to stop at the 38-yard line. Dude, you got to be careful there because as a player or coach, you cannot get two of those penalties because you'll be ejected. 38-yard line, Mingus with a 13-point lead. The Skyhawks trying to make this a one-score game at halftime. Leckington showing blitz here from the outside. Comes in, they throw the pass, goes to the opposite side. Caught by Grijalva, takes him down right at the line of scrimmage, and that's going to be Keith, so it'll be a reception out there, but for zero yards. Yeah, really nice adjustment there by uh, Grijalva on defense. I and mean, that's another quick pass. We've seen that several times tonight, and that time Grijalva was all over it. He was ready and sprinted right out into the flat. Keith has six receptions here in the first half. How about that? 3.03 clock is running out here. Second and 10, they put Marcus Johnson in motion. They're looking to throw. They throw behind him, and it was incomplete. Coming up on defense for the Mingus Marauders was Calandra on one side and Leckington on the other. And Marcus just wasn't ready for that one yet. And English threw that one, and Marcus just hadn't turned around yet. So, Well, the question is, is whether or not on that particular play you're supposed to turn right or left and it makes a big difference on where your head is. Mm -hmm. So had he turned left, the ball would have been pretty much right on him. That's a good point. He had some space too. A little bit, not too much. Leckington was reading it. Man in motion, there's the snap. And they put a little pressure on English. English has to scramble, gets to the outside, picks up a few, and then gets taken down. Looks like uh, by... Who was on? Who was Jordan on the Watson out there. There we go. That's the, the belly bump at the end of that play. I absolutely <laughs> love that, being a big guy myself. So nice job by the defensive line getting downfield and man, making the, uh, the Skyhawks look at a fourth down here. So Dylan English will pick up three on the scramble. Fourth and seven, and they're going to go for it with 218 left to go in half number one. Three receivers to the near side, one to the top, and a timeout. And I think, yeah, I think that the Deer Valley squad is going to try to talk about this and, you know, flip back into, you know, a little further in the playbook, try to see if they can pull something out that maybe Mingus hasn't seen on film yet. We will return 211 left to go. 27, Mingus on top. We're back after this. I'm Chris. And I'm Tandy, owners of Taylor Waste. We're homegrown in the Verde Valley and nearly your last local choice. We want to be your first choice for residential and small business garbage service. Get a free month service when you make the switch to Taylor Waste. And enjoy monthly service as low as $16 per month. Visit taylorwaste.com for more information. Or to start service, call Taylor Waste at 649-2662. Taylor Waste, service tailored to your needs. Uh, after the timeout, Mingus playing defense. Out comes Deer Valley. That was a good timeout, wasn't it? Yeah, Coach Dan Friedman there for the Skyhawks. Really wise move. Talk about it. You got two minutes left till halftime. You got to try to get some points. Same formation out here. Three receivers to the near side of the screen. Quarterback English rolling out to the near side. Throws, throws low. It is caught and it is questionable on whether or not it is a first down or not. Let's see where they spot it. And they are going to spot it for a first down at the 27-yard line. How about that? Yeah, I'll tell you that. And that's a fantastic play call, Jackie. So that looked like uh, Kruziger on the, on the catch. And he literally went right to the first down mark and was ready for that ball. So that's a good call by the Skyhawks. Well, nice to see him back yep. in the game. Yeah. He yep. went out with that uh, injury, so hopefully Bruland will come back as well because both of them were down at one particular point. Picks up seven yards, moves the chains for his squad. 
And a quarterback throws out of the backfield. It goes to Johnson. Johnson cuts back up underneath, gets a few yards, and then is tackled hard out there, but gets down to the 23-yard line. 122 left to go. Time becoming a little bit of an issue out here for Deer Valley. And you replay there, you see English take the shotgun snap and another really quick throw off to the flat. So the Skyhawks have got uh, that play down pat. Four yards on the reception out there, second and six. There's the snap, they hand it off and Mingus will contain it and then push it back. A one yard gain out there by Johnson and the clock continues to roll. They're gonna have to call timeout with 55 seconds and they do. We're gonna go ahead and keep it here and uh, it is gonna bring up a third and five from the Mingus Marauder 23 yard lines. Now, do, how important would a three pointer be in this game if, you, if you've got to kick the field goal attempt? Yeah, it could be crucial. Uh, I think you really need to try to go for the touchdown more. And I only say that because the Marauders offense has just been a machine tonight. I mean, really, they look crisp. So if you're the Skyhawks, I don't think you want to settle for three here. You need to try to get into the end zone because odds are uh, the Marauders, and not saying this uh, as a home fan, but the Marauders offense looks good and they are most likely going to continue to drive and you know, hopefully at least get a couple more scores. Um, so I would say that that if you're the Skyhawks, you gotta try to get more than three here. 111 yards throwing the ball is English here in the first half. I should have saved those stats for halftime. <laughs> for the homecoming halftime, Longfellow excavating home time, uh, uh, homecoming version. Third and five from the Mingus Marauder 23. English is back, has time, throws it, has a man, and could not locate it. Uh, had a man open that was Colston. Colston looked left, looked right, and it went over his head. Yeah, it was close. Really close for Colston there. And like you said, he, he looked both directions, but English put it right over the top of his helmet. I, know, I mean, another good ball. English has definitely got a good arm on him. Fourth and five now. 49 seconds left to go. So... If they don't pick this up, they have been pretty efficient in running down the clock. Minga still has three timeouts, but would have very little time left here in the first half. Three receivers to the near side. Deer Valley's thinking touchdown. They need points. There's the snap. Uh, as English comes and wanders to the near side, throws, and it is incomplete. Thinking he caught it was Felix. Felix will be denied. However, it's almost better that he didn't because Mingus will now get the ball back up at the 23-yard line instead of at the four-yard line. Yeah, there's mixed emotions over here on the home side. You have, you have a lot of fans that know uh, the football situation, and then a lot of fans just rooting for the interception. Well, <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, yeah, Felix Deep just comes down. up short, but yeah, that's going to benefit the Marauders, Jack. You, you're right about that. They'll get the ball further upfield. Stokes is two for two throwing the ball, 36 yards. And 39 seconds left in the half. The Marauders have a 20 to seven lead. Wow. I think we're gonna be seeing some conservative football. Mingus will come out in a bunch formation. Take the snap and it'll be a pitch to the Senna. Senna gets eaten up by the defense who does an extra roll out there. And that's gonna be Dylan Buss. Does a jelly roll out there. No, that's a singer, sorry. Yeah, six yards. Yards. Made the tackle, too. Yes. Six-yard loss there for Senna. And now Mingus will probably be more than happy to just let the time run out. Yep, and that's exactly what they're going to do. They're going to take a nice lead into halftime. Got Machado over here getting some medical attention out on the bench. Trying to find it where Bruin. Bruin is up standing up. Bruin is up standing up, but he is limping, but he is up standing up. That'll be halftime as we get into the extended homecoming halftime event here at Mingus Union High School. The Mingus Marauders are up 20 to 7. So nice to see your dad out here for homecoming. Yeah, I love it. Everybody's back in town. I, I, I've seen quite a few faces in the stands, and it's packed here tonight. Yes, but that is the Vinny. The, the that Vinny. Is, that, that is the, is it the or the? Either one. Okay, all right. The, the <laughs> Vinny is, a, is in attendance out here. All right, we will get into our Longfellow excavating halftime report. The Mingus Marauders on top here at halftime. 20 to 7. We are back after this.
Choose the region's most comprehensive heart program. Choose care close to home. Choose world-class surgeons. Choose Northern Arizona Healthcare. Choose precision. Choose innovation. Choose robotic-assisted knee and hip replacement. Choose Northern Arizona Healthcare. For 30 years, Rock Zoo screen printers have provided Northern Arizona with clean, crisp, quality screen printing. They work with you to make the right choices in creating the right artwork and message to put forth your best image. Choose from brand name products and even fashion forward designs, including caps, tees, sweatshirts, polos, and jackets. Make Rock Zoo your choice for work in sports uniforms, workwear, resort wear, and more. Find out more at ROKZOOTEES.com. Rock Zoo screen printers in Cottonwood, where clothing comes to rock. All Price Insurance on Main Street in Cottonwood is your local insurance provider for personal and commercial insurance. Call and compare over 150 different insurance companies for home, auto, commercial, RV, motorcycle, boat, or ATV. Specialty insurance and insurance bonds are no problem at All Price Insurance in Cottonwood. Call Rick or Scott Stokes at Sun Country Custom Woodworks about cabinets for every purpose and every budget. Sun Country Custom Woodworks can custom build cabinets for your dream kitchen or bath, adding tremendous value to your home. Organize the garage and store stuff right with a call to Sun Country. And ask about money-saving options, including modular cabinet choices. You know, your cabinets may not be from this century. For ideas, start at suncountrywoodworks.com. Well, back here, homecoming, you can see the K and the Q so that you can figure out which one you're supposed to sit on, right? That's exactly right. There we go. Okay, the king and queen, uh, the thrones are at the 50-yard line here. It is homecoming as we get into the Longfellow Excavating Halftime Report out here. And, of course, Longfellow Excavating, former Mingus Marauder, would love to see if Josh would uh, be out here today. Would love to see him back for homecoming. Longfellow Excavating, no job too big. Big, too small, and they do it all. Septic installation, drainage, graining, degrading, and so much more. Call Josh Longfellow for a free quote. It's 928-300-3792. 928-300-3792. The Mingus Marauders here at halftime. A lead of 13 points, 20 to 7. Four touchdowns scored here in the first half. Three extra points. Mingus would score first with 341 left to go in the first quarter. As Stokes keeps it himself for a 14-yard keeper. Hernandez gets the extra point. It was 7 to nothing. 11.06 left to go. Quarter number two. A two-yard counter by Ralston. His first and only touch in the first half goes for six points. It was set up by a 33-yard run by Grijalva. The extra point by Hernandez was good. And then coming back at 10 minutes left to go, 10 minutes and two seconds to be exact, and the Deer Valley Skyhawks will score. A 22-yard pass as English finds Kreisinger into, into the end zone. The extra point by English was good. The lead was cut in half, 14-7. to seven. Mingus would score then with a one-yard run by Grajolva with 3.47 left to go. A high snap didn't get the uh, kickoff, and so it's 20-7. to seven. Unfortunately, on just before that, that last scoring play, Bruland ends up um, going down and laying on the turf here. We haven't seen him back, but we have seen him standing. So that is a good sign that he's at least able to put some weight on, on that leg altogether. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's nice that he was up, standing up, uh, you know, with, with everyone else on the sidelines and going in with his team in the locker room for halftime. So, uh, you know, if we can continue to move the ball like we've been doing on offense, I don't see a need to bring him back in. Maybe we'll see him again. We obviously hope nothing's wrong there but uh, you know if you're the coaches and he did tweak something a little bit you don't want to go out and have him just continue to run the football so if you can you keep him safe and you get him ready for next week but so we will see if we see Bruin well certainly he had he had goals of course for another 100 yard game out there as uh, you see some of your nom nom nominees out there for the freshman and sophomore groups and all that fun stuff 
as they're going to bring out uh, the nominees for King and Queen. I know that they're doing freshmen and sophomores and of course juniors and seniors out there. And uh, they're going to have, some somebody is going to have a fantastic night out here, yes? No, they're all having a fantastic night, Jackie. This is uh, a great time to be a, a student athlete, a student at the school here. And some of our freshman nominees, uh, I got the list here. Uh, we got Cameron Hauseman, Faith East, uh, Hannah Bear, uh, Aylin Gamboa, some of our freshman nominees there. Some Sweet. sophomores that are coming out now, our Jacob McKean, Lana Booth. And now we got our juniors coming out, Connor Lichowski, Hope Calandra, Ethan Montiel, Vanessa Mendez, Jeremiah Libby, and Alea Myers. Nice. So it's going to be an exciting night for somebody out here, which is going to be, well, it's going to be exciting for everybody, but all the nominees, we've got a couple of football jerseys out there as well, as uh, Ethan Mont Montiel is out there for the Mingus Marauders. I thought I saw other jerseys out there. Was it Hernandez? Yep, Hernandez is out yep, there. He's going to be out there. And Fitch, if I remember correctly, is also out there for the Mingus Marauders. Oh, we're our first uh, homecoming Boken. queen nominee is Riley Boken. Oh, yeah. She's getting a big standing ovation out there. I love it. A huge crowd here. And it's going to be Hernandez that's going to be along with her, yes? Yes, most certainly. I need you hear Hernandez walking alongside her. Beautiful. And then one more nominee out there, which is going to be exciting as we take a look at some of the standings. Some of the standings, you look at the Mingus Marauders Grand Canyon region. Lee Williams is up on top 4-0. and oh. Bradshaw Mountain is 3-1. and one. Coconino is 2-1 and one overall. And the Flagstaff Eagles are 1-3 and three ahead of the Mingus Marauders, who are 2-2, two and two, but 1-2 and two in uh, 4A football. And Prescott is at 1-3, and three, uh, the bottom seller of the Grand Canyon region. But interesting that you've got Lee Williams sitting on top, undefeated so far in the Grand Canyon region. Yeah, we knew they were going to be good. They've been good the last few seasons, and it's it's exciting to see the Grand Canyon region produce a lot of playoff teams as of recent. And this is our, our last nominees coming out for uh, the senior nominees for uh, Homecoming King and Queen and Mia Halstead and Landon Fitch coming on out. Mia is Great to see all the support out here. Like you said earlier in the broadcast, Jackie, it's pretty much standing room only here in the cave, so awesome to see this, and the crowd's pretty loud tonight, which is great. Well, I think they're going to announce, so we're going to keep it here, and we're going to try to see if we can get uh, the announcement live for our king and queen. As we look through the rest of 4A football, Arcadia has a great start. They are 4-0, and oh, as well as Vista Grande in the Desert Sky Division. East Mark is ahead in the East Sky. And Marcos Deniza both tied at three and one. And here we go. Here's the announcement. Eileen Gamboa. Eileen Gamboa is your freshman princess. Nice. As she gets a huge standing ovation. This is awesome. Cameron Hauseman. Cameron as the freshman prince. See the football jersey out there. Love to see the players. There we go. Your 2023 sophomore princess is Lana Booth. And our sophomore princess comes out, Lana Booth. Selected by all of her lovely peers prince, out here cheering. Jacob McKean gets the call for the sophomore prince. Congratulations. Your 2023 junior princess so special. A lot of, a lot of blushy Aaliyah cheeks out there too, Jackie. Aliyah Myers, our junior princess, Aliyah Myers. Your junior prince, Jeremiah. And the prince Libby. is going to be Jeremiah Libby. Congratulations. And now we are to the moment we have been waiting this for. Is the drum roll. We need a, a drum roll in here. For homecoming king and queen. Jair Hernandez. And there's the big guy playing both sides of the line. Jair Hernandez is going to be homecoming king. The 2023 and Riley Boken. 
Nice. As How about princess. that? Awesome. And they are going to take uh, their thrones out here. Congratulations. So he is going to get no locker room information here today. Thank goodness he's already playing a good game. Yeah, I don't think he needs it. He, <laughs> they're doing a great job. The big guys are all over the field tonight. He's going to get back to the locker room. And go, what am I supposed to do? Just do what you did. Yep. Yeah, there yep. we go. Well, congratulations to all of our princes and princesses, our king and queen for homecoming 2023. We are going to take a break and go on with our Longfellow Excavating Halftime Report, the homecoming version after this. All Price Insurance on Main Street in Cottonwood is your local insurance provider for personal and commercial insurance. Call and compare over 150 different insurance companies for home, auto, commercial, RV, motorcycle, boat, or ATV. Specialty insurance and insurance bonds are no problem at All Price Insurance in Cottonwood. When you're looking for a plumber, no matter the job, call Divest Plumbing. From energy-saving tankless water systems to whatever remodel project you have in mind, from the simple to the exotic, Divest Plumbing prides themselves on quality workmanship and efficiency. For honest and fair prices and plumbing problems done right the first time, call Divest Plumbing at 928-567-8755 or find them online at d-bestplumbing.com. The right vehicles, the right people, the right price. Make Jones Ford of Verde Valley the right place to buy. Choose from our new in-stock Ford selection or custom order just the way you want it. Buy pre-owned with peace of mind with Jones Ford's lifetime powertrain warranty at no extra cost. Plus, drive a little, save a lot. Jones Ford is your tax advantage destination. So, for the right vehicles at the right price, make the right choice. Jones Ford Verde Valley, family owned and operated for over half a century. Just off I-17 in Camp Verde. Yavapai College has many degree and certificate programs to get you on track to a rewarding, well-paying career in a variety of industries such as healthcare, manufacturing, construction, elementary education, and art. Fall semester starts on August 15th, so there's still time to register. Visit us online today at yc.edu slash admission to connect with your future career. And 76 yards of offense for the Mingus Marauders in half number one as uh, Mingus dominates with uh, a score of 20 to 7, a 13 point lead here for homecoming 2023. Stokes is two for two. He's got uh, passes out there, completed passes to Grahova for 14 yards and De La Haye for 22 yards. On the ground, the Mingus Marauders 140 yards on 25 carries altogether. Grahova is well on his way to his third 100 yards yard game again 11 carries 87 yards one touchdown Senna has one carry for a loss for six yards Brulin 10 carries 39 yards but we may not see him in the second half depending on how he is feeling we certainly wish him well Stokes has got uh, two carries for f uh, 18 yards and a touchdown Ralston also has a touchdown run for two yards out there for the Mingus Marauders 176 total yards of offense for for the Mingus Marauders. Dylan English, man, he has been on, on point here. He's got 111 yards, one touchdown, and a no interception as he has... He's got 12 completed passes out of 20, so it's 12 for 20, 111 yards, and a touchdown, no interceptions out here for the game on the ground. Boy, it has not been a ground game at all. Marcus Johnson has got four carries for five yards. Dylan English has one carry for three yards, so they're averaging 1.6 yards a carry on the ground, only eight yards, uh, but certainly better than what they did last year against the Mingus Marauders. Yeah, no doubt, and English has been pretty on point with his passing. I mean, we talked pregame. We were going to see a little bit of an air game from them. Um, if I remember correctly, Jackie, I know Deer Valley had a quarterback struggle a couple weeks last season, and we, we were fortunate enough to play them when their quarterback was out. So English comes in tonight as their starter, and he's doing really, really well. Uh, I mean, last year, Deer, Deer Valley did not put up any points against the Marauders. Uh, they were under 100 yards passing and rushing total 
Uh, the Marauders held the Skyhawks to only seven yards passing and 51 yards on the ground. So last year, the Marauders defense was just keeping them down, not letting them go anywhere. Um, and offensively, boy, Seth Brulin had a great game last year against the Skyhawks. He had 141 yards on the ground. So uh, you know he's trying to get back out there. He says, I want to get another 100-yard game against these guys. Um, so Marauders really gave it to the Skyhawks last year. Uh, almost 400 yards rushing and then uh, 41 yards through the air. The Marauders went and the Marauders end up winning that one 34 nothing. So Bruins right now talking to the coaches going, okay, just give me the boot. Yeah. <laughs> I'll run in the boot. I'll, I'll run in the boot. You know? He can do it. Yeah. He's, he's like, I can do it. Let me get right up the middle. Right. The boot will only boost him a little bit more. Right. <laughs> uh, and I'll only be a little bit higher on the right side yeah. than I am He's the used side. to getting the tough yards anyway. Right. So. Strap the boot on him. He'll be fine. I'm, you're right. He's got to be with that attitude. Well, yeah, he definitely wants to get out there and, and get some more yardage as we go along here. Our halftime uh, uh, individual. <laughs> Vision or our halftime um, show here for Homecoming 2023 from Longfellow Excavating. And of course, uh, I was talking about some of the leaders in the 4A division. I was talking about Arcadia and Vista Grande in the Desert Sky. Um, they're, they're undefeated. Up top in the East Sky, East Mark. Well, they came up from 3A and they are 3 and 1. Marcos Denise is 3 and 1. In the West Valley, we've got four teams that are, are vying for number one Northwest Christian, Buckeye, and Yuma Catholic are all uh, perfect so far. Four and O oh, and Thunderbird is three and one and Thunderbird oh. beat Prescott earlier this season as one of their wins. Greenway has got the lead in the Skyline Division. They are three and O. Oh. Right behind them, the Peoria Panthers are three and one. And in the Southwest Division, Independence, well, they're way out to a lead here. The Patriots have a three and one record. Closest to them is Seton Catholic at one and three. In the Copper Sky Division, we are playing the leader in the Copper Sky Division, Deer Valley at two and two and two and one in the conference leads the Copper Sky Division Copper Canyon number two at one and three. Going down south, the Gila Division, Rincon is in charge at two and one. It's been a while for them. Choya is right behind them at two and two. Canyon Del Oro who according, if the Bradshaw game is any indication Canyon Del Oro is for real. Yep. Yep. For real. They are four and oh. Right behind them is Micah Mountain. They're a force to be reckoned with. Pueblo is having a good year. They're three and one so far. And then in the Grand Canyon region, controlled right now by Lee Williams, who is four and oh overall, three and oh in the conference. Bradshaw, three and one in the conference, and three and one overall with a much harder schedule. But nonetheless, um, it's going to be interesting when those two teams match up. Coconino is two and one. The Eagles are one and three, but yet ahead of the Mingus Marauders, who are two and two because the Mingus Marauders are 1-2 and two in the 4A conference. And uh, holding the basement position right now are the Prescott Badgers, which is interesting. Here come the teams back out on the field. Mingus Marauders from the locker room. Deer Valley from the... I don't know where they put the Deer Valley squad. They, come, they go off to the side over there, but they're coming back. We're going to take our final break here at our halftime. When we return, we'll get ready for second half action coming up after this. When you're looking for a plumber, no matter the job, call Divest Plumbing. From energy-saving tankless water systems to whatever remodel project you have in mind, from the simple to the exotic, Divest Plumbing prides themselves on quality workmanship and efficiency. For honest and fair prices and plumbing problems done right the first time, call Divest Plumbing at 928-567-8755 or find them online at d-bestplumbing.com. Longvello excavating the halftime sponsored, licensed, bonded, insured, and family owned and operated with decades of experience throughout the family. Call a former Mingus Marauder for your septic installation, drainage, grading, and so much more. Call uh, Longfellow Excavating for a free quote. Josh Longfellow is easy to catch. 928-300-3792. We want to welcome back all the Mingus Marauders from 2003 with their 20-year reunion out here today. And uh, hopefully they are enjoying this game 
game. The Mingus Marauders uh, are on top 20 to seven here at halftime. They put three minutes on the clock for secondary warmups. And uh, we're gonna try to see if we can find Bruland out there, see if he is warming up with the rest of the team at all. Yeah, I saw Bruland uh, just hanging out on the sidelines, Jackie. So not being uh, too active, but he still has all of his gear on as if uh, he's like, coach, I wanna get back out there. So most of the time that's the attitude uh, that the players have and well right now he's got a seat so yeah. he's got a uh, he's got a uh uh, front view seat for probably what will be the rest of this game. Now, obviously, hopefully Mingus does not need him. The other person that we haven't seen out here, we haven't seen Camacho. And Camacho apparently is available as needed, cleared to play, but available as needed. And, you know, that's kind of a coaching call. I mean, right. you know, I, it, I mean, as soon as the doc says, yes, they can play, you want to play them. But then at the same time, maybe you don't, you know? Exactly. And so many times the players uh, really don't even care about their injuries and or want to play through them. Um, I mean, I was a part of that myself. You just kind of want to play through it. And these guys are battling hard. But, uh, I mean, you're right. It's just it's time to rest up. Uh, if you're not needed, hopefully, like you said, Marauders do not need um, Camacho and or Bruin tonight. And we can rest them up, get ready for region play. And so far tonight, the offense has been on it. Uh, I mean, no reason to bring him back in when your other weapons are working right now. Marauders have a nice lead here on homecoming. And the offense has a lot of momentum, and we're getting the ball back to start this half. We are getting the ball back. The Mingus Marauders are definitely getting the ball back to start here the second half. An update on Bruinland. It appears as though it is not all that tremendously serious. It might be a high calf sprain somewhere uh, somewhere in that general vicinity. The question is, is whether or not he will come back and do any touches here in the second half. Uh, maybe third quarter, maybe fourth quarter, maybe not at all. Yeah, yeah. Um, but most importantly, what that sounds like is he might be back for the Flagstaff game. Now, we got to start warning everybody. NAU used to play where you had to start the game at 7.30. Nope, they changed everything. Game time is 6 p.m. 6 p.m. That means that pregame is going to be at 5.30. Okay, and that'll be up in Flagstaff next to Friday night at the NAU Walk-Up Sky Dome. So it's going to be an early game. You tune in at 7, you're going to be disappointed because we're going to almost be in the second half action here. Yeah, and that's so strange. We're going to get everybody out of the dome. Uh, we're not sure. It's not, we're not in that prime time hour anymore. We're at the, like the evening news hour. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, you got to get out of Flagstaff as soon as the sun goes down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thanks for coming. Get out. <laughs> and, I, and I love playing up there. That's such a, a great atmosphere. And boy, a couple seasons ago, I got to call one of the best high school football games that I've been a part of where Mingus and Flagstaff were going back and forth uh, with the lead in the last few minutes of the game. And Flagstaff ended up edging out that win. But man. And Jackie, that was one of the best high school football games I had seen, and I was uh, lucky enough to be behind the mic calling it. Now, how does that compare to Lakeside Blue Ridge oh. Mingus this year? Oh, you can't do that to oh, me. Yes, I have Blue to Ridge say. Blue Ridge game beats it. Okay. I mean, absolutely, the Blue Ridge game beats it. Um, you get bonus points. I know that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes. And I know uh, Rain Stokes um, and Mikey Grijalva ended up making um, quite a few of the news channels with that play, and they were in a lot of polls for you know top play of the week right. and things like that. So, I mean, what an amazing, that was, that was a miracle right but there. But Brophy took the top play of the week, you know, but then again, that, that I, I went to Brophy. I know that Brophy family, there was there was telephone, po you know, polls going. There you go. They Thank were calling you know people across the nation <laughs> telling them to vote. So, you know how that goes. Okay, so the Mingus Marauders, Johnson will be kicking off for the second time this game. As we get underway here for quarter number three, Mingus leading 20 to seven as we're ready to start second half action. There's the whistle. Johnson's been given the go-ahead to get up to the ball and he will kick it. It'll be a line drive. It'll bounce and picked up at about the 17 yard line. It'll come to the near side. It's going to be Camacho. Camacho tries going to the sideline and Camacho gets his first touch of the game and he gets out to about the 25 yard line. Now, when we go on defense again, we're going to have to see whether or not Camacho is coming out for Brulin to play that safety position. Yeah, we'll see because Camacho is just nice return and he does a little somersault at the end, Jackie, and then rolls right over to the bench and has a seat. So he, he had his action. 
Wing formation for the Mingus Marauders. Handoff goes Grijalva. Grijalva cuts through a, a uh, would-be tackler through the line and a good gain of about eight yards. He is running hard out there. Yeah, an offensive line for the Marauders just doing a great job. Absolutely great job. And give a shout out to Bo Godwin, another offensive line for the Marauders. Speaking of uh, the Mingus Marauders, the Mingus Marauders victorious on the freshman sophomore level, 48 to nothing on Wednesday night. Wow. And we got to talk about a new rule, the new clock rule. We're going to do that after this play. As Senna's going to come to the near side, take a slot position, one back in the backfield. And now they're going to put Senna in motion, and there's the snap. They fake the handoff, and Stokes looks to run, throws, has it up. Grijalva, an acrobatic catch out there, spins, per, does the parade or whatever they call it with the ballerina move, and picks up the first down. And reigns to Grijalva. It's quite the combination. Absolutely love seeing that chemistry grow for the Marauders offense. And how about the Marauders? Are able to play a, a great passing game and running game. Stokes is perfect so far, three for three in the game. That one goes 11 yards and a first down. Second reception out there for Graholva in the game. He's got two for 25. Mingus takes the snap. They do hand it off, and the Skyhawks are going to sniff it out. Graholva gets one or two on the game. Puts the ball at the 44-yard line of the Skyhawks. Mingus with the lead and the ball. First drive of quarter number three. And second and eight for the Mingus Marauders. 10.40 left to go in quarter number three. 13-point lead if you're just joining us. 20 to seven here for homecoming 2023. Mingus sets up in that wing position. And they jump, and there, yep, there's going to be the flag. The question is, is which way? I'm seeing an encroachment sign from the far line judge. Let's see what the white hat has to say about it. See if he agrees. He is going to agree. That's going to be a free five for the Mingus Marauders. And that is just excellent discipline by the Marauders. That's the second time we've seen that tonight. Only three penalties called in the first half. Only three penalties in the first half. That's the first one for the Mingus Marauders in the second half. Actually, the first one against the Skyhawks as they try to get the clock rolling again. There's the snap. First man through is Grijalva. Grijalva. That is called a trap, is it not, sir? Absolutely. And it's executed so well by that offensive line. You see Latham getting up at the end there. Uh, Leckington's getting a great block downfield. That's, that's just a great job by the offense to execute a run right up the middle. Grijalva with that run picks up his third 100 yard game in a row. Third 100 yard game in a row. Congratulations, Mikey. As we hit 9.55 left to go, first down for the Mingus Marauders, 28 yard line of the Skyhawks. Felix is going to go to the top side for the receiver position for Mingus. Stokes under center. Looks to take the snap. There it is, and we'll give it to the second man. That's going to be Senna. Senna finds some running room out there, gets down and about to the 20-yard line right at the edge of the red zone, and that, too, was a great fake by Stokes. I have to say the improvement in the, the footwork and the backfield work for the Mingus Marauder offense is, is really starting to show. Yeah, yeah, great call out, and you're right. Reigns is getting so good at that fake hand off a couple times tonight. Not only has he fooled the cameras, he's fooled the crowd, he's fooled us up here, and it's just making for easy runs for his running backs. Second and two, and there is the snap. It comes to the near side. Power is the run, and he gets the corner toward the end zone, and into the end zone is Senna. Senna will pick it up the 20-yard run, and the touchdown extending the lead to 26-7. To yeah, Well-deserved Senna and that offensive line. Look at them all downfield, and of course leading the way, Mikey Grijalva. So if he's not running with the ball, he's blocking for a ball carrier. So, And if he's not blocking, job. he's tackling somebody. Or catching it. Yeah, there you go. Third quarter action, 8.59 left to go, and Mingus will extend the lead with the 20-yard touchdown run. And that offense for the Marauders, Jack, he's got to have some great confidence right now. They're playing very well. I don't see 75 out there, which means that they might be going for two. That, I'm going to have to check. That might be the first rushing touchdown for Senna this year. 
Mingus sets up for the two-point conversion, and uh, they will throw it into the back of the end zone. And it is incomplete out there, intended for, I believe, Leckington. And Stokes takes a shot at the end of that one, so the two-point conversion does not work. Mingus hangs on to a 19-point lead, 8.59 left to go, third quarter. 26-7, to Mingus on top, we're back after this. People often refer to Larry Green Chevrolet as the people place. Keeping that reputation is a priority in the community and with every customer that comes through the door. Larry Green Chevrolet, we're better and we'll prove it. If you're in the market for a new or pre-owned car, truck, van or SUV, you'll find our selection extensive and the sales team professional and courteous. Visit Larry Green Chevrolet just off Highway 260 next to Walmart or LarryGreenChevrolet.com. We were talking about that during the break. That pass was actually open for that two-point conversion. And Stokes approaches, and he'll pop it up in the air. They're going to kick it over to the near side, and it will go out of bounds right at the 21-yard line again. Man, he keeps trying to just put the ball right there and get to, try to get it to die, and it goes out of bounds by a foot or two. Yeah, and what just keeping it away from the dangerous returners. And being Johnson, I mean, you're keeping it away from them. And, I mean, you're still, the Skyhawks offense has not really gotten anything working too well tonight, except English through the air. So, yeah, you know, the Marauders defense, this is an okay spot to start. 12 for 20 in the first half was Dylan English. He'll take over with pretty decent field position. Three receivers to the near side of your screen. One back, Johnson's in the backfield with him. Out of shotgun, takes the snap, looks to throw, throws it quick, goes to Keith, near side, wrapped up, thrown down. Leckington keeps that one to a short gain. Man, that's just textbook tackling right there. That's really fast closing speed by Leckington. I mean, you can see on your replay here, English is going to get this, and it's another really quick throw out to the flats. He knows exactly where he's throwing it, and Leckington does a really nice job of noticing that and getting right there for the tackle. Keith has been active. That number two, oh, how about that? His seventh reception of the game. Have a game, young man. Two backs in the backfield. We'll see if one goes in motion. Dylan looks to take the snap. Nobody in motion. There's the snap. Yeah, uh, there is motion. And uh, let's see who that is going to go against. Might be a false start. And it will be a false start against, against Deer Valley. Deer Valley has stuck with the five-yard penalties out here today. That is their third. Two of them have been defensively and have been first downs yeah. for the Mingus Marauders. Yeah, really good discipline by the Marauders on those penalties. Second and 11 now as the ball sits at the 34-yard line of the Skyhawks. Two receivers top, two receivers bottom. Keith is in the slot. Johnson will be to the left-hand side of it. Dylan English puts a man in motion. There's the snap. It looks to the right, looks to throw, brings it back down. He's in trouble, and he is contained and sacked. That is going to be a one-yard sack out there for the Mingus Marauders. Bowers is in, and Latham helps up the quarterback. He'll lose a yard. Yeah, what a great job by Clay Bowers. Clay Bowers playing on the edge so fast, and able to get to English, and then, of course, his other defensive linemen get to come in and help him out. English runs over to get the play, runs back. You get a lot of running in at a quarterback position here yeah. at the high yep. school level. They don't let you have those um, helmets that have the, the <laughs> speakers in them so the coach can talk in your ear. Three receptions to the top side, one back in the backfield. There's the snap. He looks right, looks right again, and he's in trouble. He's coming to the near side, has a little bit of room, throws and throws it behind his man, but nonetheless, he avoids the six-yard sack and throws the ball downfield as not coming back from Colston. Colston started going downfield instead of trying to settle into an open area. And had he settled, he would have caught the ball and, and probably had decent yardage, but it's going to bring up a fourth and 12. And going back for the punt return is going to be Camacho. So Camacho taking over some duties out here from Bruland. See if uh, Camacho is hopefully 100% coming back from that uh, groin injury. Fourth and 12. 
Mingus has 10 on the line. Looks like they might be trying to come after this punt. There's the snap, good snap. The kick is up and it is going to come down and bounce out. Of, it's gonna land out of bounds. And we're gonna see where they're gonna mark it. They're gonna mark it at the 40 yard line. So in effect, that works out to be pretty decent for the Mingus Marauders as they get a three and out and get the ball back. Yeah, most certainly. That's exactly what you want if you're uh, defense here on homecoming night. Keeping the Skyhawks just to seven points. So timing wise, I learned something. I'm constantly learning about high school football. The rule has been 42 points is when you get to a continuous clock. That continues to be true in the first half. However, in the second half, if you are up by 35, then you still have a continuous clock. So second half, 35 points becomes a continuous clock. I could not understand last game against Copper Canyon why the, the clock was rolling, that's why. Mingus will hand it off. Senna finds a hole, breaks to the outside, and then breaks back into the inside. A good run. So he'll pick up a solid seven out there on a first down play. Man, I, we just, uh, we must have missed the invites to the AIA committee for that rule, Jackie. We could have had our input on that. Nobody invites me. <laughs> coach Young actually used to, when I was on Coach Young's staff as a coach, every year he made me go to those meetings to learn about all the rule changes. No, I won't say me, made me, asked me, invited me, instructed me, uh, voluntold me. Uh, first and third, uh, three, and Grohava will pick up the first down and then gets tackled by the ball as he gets into Skyhawk territory down to the 49-yard line. Needed three, picked up four. Yeah, and this offensive line for the Marauders, uh, being an offensive lineman myself, I, I got to give these guys love. They're playing great, moving the chains. I mean, they're getting the momentum off the snap of the ball. They look so sharp. And man, if you're the running backs for the Marauders right now, you better be uh, getting these guys a drink or some kind of treat during the week. Well, before the game, I was talking to Grijalva and I was talking to Brulin, and I was telling them, you know, back when dinosaurs roamed the earth and I was in high school, the, the homecoming dance was at the end of the football game. And so, you know, when, when the game was over, you went and showered and went straight to the dance. Stokes under center, takes a snap and uh, fakes the handoff. No, he does hand it off to Senna. That again was a fantastic fake. And Senna only picks up one It is well defended. But uh, I thought for sure that Stokes still had the ball on that one. That was a good fake. Yeah, and what's, that's, that's just gonna set Stokes up for next time. I mean, really, it's, he can continue to get these fakes looking really good. It's going to open up more plays for you. Well, it takes a whole defensive player or two. Sometimes you get three to follow you, and then they're not following the ball. Do you know who else is great at the fakes? I mean, honestly, tremendously great at the fakes is Walsworth. Walsworth at the freshman sophomore level. Holy cow. There's the snap and a handoff and then a lost ball. That might be De La Haye as the ball was on the turf out there. We're going to see if they're, it looked like he got back on it. And That's no, they're going to give it, wow. they're going to give it off to the squad from Deer Valley. Well, that's Aiden Fletcher coming up with the ball for the Skyhawks. Nice job, young man. The uh, senior for the Skyhawks at the bottom of that pile definitely took the ball away because it looked like the Marauders were on top of it. And the uh, Skyhawks get the turnover. So it's gonna be Deer Valley ball at the Mingus Marauder 48 yard line. Tremendous starting position here. 4.30 left to go in quarter number three. Mingus leading by 19. Better than a three score game out here. 26 to seven, our score. English in the backfield, he has got two running backs with him and he will hold on to the ball and then throws the ball back to a receiver who is hit way behind the line of scrimmage but he had no opportunity he had to catch that ball and that was going to be Tyler LeBaron now Tyler LeBaron out there is the other quarterback I think that might have been a trick play could have been but man Marauders were all over it that's an awesome job by the defensive line it didn't matter what kind of trickery the Skyhawks were trying to get off there. It, uh, it did not matter. Well, he somebody had him by the ankles, and then he finally threw the ball. It's going to be a reception, but a loss of 12 on the play. There is the snap. English has to come to the near side, scrambles, has a man, throws it away as he is nearly taken down. Calandra was coming 
with a passion after him. It's going to be third and 22. And English was trying to get that ball. I mean, I think he just kind of threw it away at the end. But C.J. Williams, junior for the Skyhawks, was coming back for him right there, trying to help his quarterback out. But Marauders' defensive line, Jackie, is just too hard-nosed, man. They're getting in the backfield. Each of these plays in this series really causing some havoc for English. It is third and long. Third and 22. And Deer Valley will take the snap and uh, trying to run out of it is gonna be Marcus Johnson. Marcus Johnson will gain about three. Marcus Johnson on the run. Just to get some positive yards out there. And it'll be fourth and still super long. Fourth and about 19 out there for Deer Valley. And we see Camacho buckling the helmet, getting back out here for a uh, punt return. I forgot to check and see who was playing safety out there for the Mingus Marauders in place of Bruland. We'll need to look for that. Coming out to punt once again are the Deer Valley squad. See if Camacho, see if they kick the ball to him. If he gets a chance at it. Mingus has 10 on the line of scrimmage. They come after it, low snap. They do get the punt off. It is going to bounce in front of Camacho and take a Deer Valley roll down to about the 23 yard line. Camacho very wisely staying away from that one. Poison it was, it wasn't far enough for him to get uh, a good handle on it before he would get hit. 3.15 left to go, quarter number three. Mingus gets the ball back, second three and out defensively after the lost fumble out there. So Mingus needs a turnover to uh, match up the turnover ratio, 26 to seven. Deer Valley came in with a positive two turnover ratio into this game, so they don't give up the ball much. No, and that's just really good ball protection. And I mean, the Marauders here, if they can get some more points on the board, obviously that kind of drifts away in the back of your mind. There's the snap, and uh, it's going to be the second back through. It's going to be Ralston. Ralston rumbles, stumbles past the 40, and then is tackled by the turf out here as he gets out to the 42-yard line. Picks up 19. And nice job by Ralston in the offensive line, giving him plenty of room, plenty of room. I mean, he saw a lot of turf in front of him and uh, kind of lost his feet at the end of that one. Well, what he had with that, quite honestly, was um, a, a great counter. 19 yards, wing formation, they're gonna hand it off. Senna grabs the ball, follows his blockers, power to the right-hand side, gets across the 45, lays down at about the 45-yard line for a gain of three. You know, he's just trying to follow Jahir Hernandez and just kind of came up short. And the Skyhawks did a good job of kind of staying at that middle linebacker position and getting to Mikey. Offensive line still getting off the ball great, though, for the Marauders and getting downfield and getting some good blocks. Well, Senna looks like uh, he's taking Bruland's duties running the ball. So far in the game, he's got 33 yards on six carries. Ball sits at the 45 yard line. Mingus with the lead 26 to seven, 154 left to go in quarter number three. Wing formation, man in motion, and there is the snap and it's gonna be a handoff for Grijalva trying to get to the outside, a stiff arm and then out of bounds at the other 45 yard line as he will pick up at least 10. Let's see where they mark it. They're gonna give him 11 on the run. Yeah, what a great run too, I mean. Grijalva's definitely smaller than Caden Griffin in size. Caden Griffin for the Skyhawks stands. Seniors at six foot and man, Mikey just stiff arms him right to the turf there at the end of that run. Then gets out of bounds and avoids the hit. Yep. That's one less bruise for Saturday morning, right? As the clock continues to move too. So as an offense, this is exactly what you want to be doing. 26-7. One minute and 20 seconds and ticks left on uh, the third quarter. Quarterback keeps it, looks to throw, now looks to run, tries to split the defense and will get sacked for the first time. A one yard loss. That's a, uh, here we go. They move the ball up just a tiny bit. I was gonna say, Reigns looked like he got back to that line of scrimmage, which is a great play uh, by Reigns because 
he, for all intents and purposes, looked like it could have been a couple yard loss. I think he realized that, and then he tucked himself in and just, you know, fell right up field, trying to get back to that line of scrimmage. Well, the best way not to take a hit is to actually split the defense. Because what happens on when you split the defense, mostly the that's when you get the friendly fi the friendly fire yep. hits. Yep. When the defense usually hits each other harder than they hit you. One receiver on either side, they hand it off. Grijalva follows his blockers up through the middle, and he will pick up four. It's going to bring up a third and six, and that might be the last play here in quarter number three. The Mingus Marauders at the Skyhawk 41-yard line. And I, I think so, Jackie. I think the Marauders are going to be satisfied with that amount of plays and take this into the fourth quarter. And we're going to take us into the 448 as well. At the end of three, Mingus with the lead, 26 to seven. We're back to the cave for homecoming 2023 after this. All Price Insurance on Main Street in Cottonwood is your local insurance provider for personal and commercial insurance. Call and compare over 150 different insurance companies for home, auto, commercial, RV, motorcycle, boat, or ATV. Specialty insurance and insurance bonds are no problem at All Price Insurance in Cottonwood. Call Rick or Scott Stokes at Sun Country Custom Woodworks about cabinets for every purpose and every budget. Sun Country Custom Woodworks can custom build cabinets for your dream kitchen or bath, adding tremendous value to your home. Organize the garage and store stuff right with a call to Sun Country. And ask about money-saving options, including modular cabinet choices. You know, your cabinets may not be from this century. For ideas, start at suncountrywoodworks.com. Mingus Marauders trying to get out of homecoming here and take a 3-2 and two record into Grand Canyon region play, which starts next Friday from the NAU Walk-Up Sky Dome. It'll be early, and we have a false start. We start the 448 with a false start. That'll be the third penalty against the Mingus Marauders, 35 yards in penalties, and that is going to bring it to a third and 12 now. Forty-six yard line becomes the new line of scrimmage. That's okay. Marauders offense going to huddle up and talk about how they're going to execute this next play and make up those yards again. You know the penalties that the Skyhawks got earlier in the game was all on just the Marauders' great discipline. Two of the three, yeah, on defensive, yes. There's the snap, fake handoff. Stokes looks to throw, has a man. De La Haye out there, has the first down, drives his shoulder pads into the defensive player, picks up an extra yard out there. Mingus needs 11, they got 13 out of that. And Stokes remains perfect in the game. Four for four, 60 yards. Two completed passes in the first half, two completed passes in the second half. Ralston comes back in and tells Stokes what the play is. Coach said, throw it to me. Perfect. <laughs> that, that worked. That worked. And Reigns is like, uh, hey, let's do that play again. Are you sure he said throw it to you? Okay, we'll throw it to you. <laughs> De La Hay has two receptions out there for 35 yards. Both of them have been wide open. There's the snap, and it'll be a running play. It is coming the other way. It's going to be Ralston. Ralston cuts inside and uh, will pick up the first down, give him 13 yards on the carry as he's inside the 20 down to the 19. I told you he called his own number. Man, it's awesome to see the Marauders utilizing different weapons. Man, offensively, they're able to get it done with just so many different running backs and wide receivers and Ralston having himself a night. We've seen Senna earlier in uh, some other drives having a great night as well. What I like to see is, is uh, so far this season, this has been the best Mingus has looked on the counter. It, it really, seriously, they, I agree with you. they, they have yep. looked fantastic on the counter here tonight. It has gone for chunk yardage, and there is the snap. Grijalva runs into all, all sorts. No, that's Senna. Senna gets knocked down and sits down on his butt, picks up one. Down to the 18-yard line. Got to give a shout out, Jackie. A couple of marauders watching the game. And close friends back in New York. Rich Bodding says the boys are buzzing. Bo Godwin, ex-marauder, watching the game. Oh, how are you? 
are you, man? Reaching out, loves to, loves to see the Marauders doing well. So the homecomer, homecoming out-of-state viewers joining the party Love. out here. There's the snap. Mingus will give it to the second back, and uh, Senna follows his block. He'll get down to the 15-yard line. Down maybe to the 14-yard line. And how about Senna shoving Jahir Hernandez right into the block? That was great. Go this way, big man. That's, that's a good way to utilize the big man right there. Well, that's called hiding. <laughs> All right, 9.35 left to go and a timeout on the field. All right, quick and catch. 76 is coming off the, could be equipment. Elijah Chupp, Elijah Chupp who did some, actually started for the Mingus Marauders at a guard position is going to limp off the field out here. And hopefully he is gonna be okay as he Kind of wobbling over yeah. to the tables there. He's going to get some some attention and maybe some extra tape and and encouragement out there. Hopefully nothing serious. Yeah, that line for the Marauders, both offensively and defensively, playing really well. 16-yard line, the line of scrimmage here as Mingus has to make an offensive line change. Stokes keeps the ball, has blockers out in front of him. A flag is thrown. Stokes will fight toward the line and try to get the first down, but a penalty flag comes out at the 16-yard line, and we're going to see if Stokes Stokes' efforts get to count. Or not. And I wonder if they're going to get, uh, you just saw the replay there on VVTV. I wonder if they're going to get Choate for a hold there, even though he kind of threw his man to the ground. Well, throwing is kind of a hold. Knocking is different. Holding, Mingus. Yep, that's exactly what it's going to be. And see, I disagree. I think uh, throwing to the ground shouldn't be a hold, but that's because I'm a little bit biased for the lineman. <laughs> I may have tried that a few times. Says, says a lineman. And when the flag came out, your arms came out. What? What I do? What? I what? just made sure they didn't know what number I was. Right, right. Hide, hide. <laughs> huddle, huddle, quick. Third and 14 now. As the clock gets underway, Stokes steps back, looks to throw, has some room, runs inside the 20, cuts back down to about the 17 yard line, but that's gonna bring up a fourth down. Fourth and about eight from the 18 yard line. Now, do you try the field goal? Do you try to kick the ball? You keep the offense out here, and if you fail, obviously you've got Deer Valley starting deep in their own territory. Uh, you know, it's a great game. We're coming up on some region games here too, Jack. I'd like to, to see a kick. Uh, I mean, I know it's not the Marauders' forte, um, but as you get closer to region play and you're trying to get a spot into playoffs, you are going to absolutely need all your special teams on point. Um, but, hey, you know, for homecoming, it's really a, a coin toss. I mean, the kick would get you prepared for some region play right, and you get to practice that a little bit more. Uh, but going for the touchdown is going to obviously give you a bigger spread down here. You want, uh, you want a bigger spread when you're playing homecoming and trying to get some points on the board. So fourth and nine, and uh, there is all sorts of time ticking off here. Ming is certainly taking their time, wondering whether or not, yeah, they're gonna call a timeout. They waited and used as much time as possible before they called timeout for 743. We're gonna find out what they're gonna do. We're gonna take a 30 second quick break with them. We'll return to Mingus Union High School coming up after this. Choose the region's most comprehensive heart program. Choose care close to home. Choose world-class surgeons. Choose Northern Arizona Healthcare. Choose precision. Choose innovation. Choose robotic-assisted knee and hip replacement. Choose Northern Arizona Healthcare. Back here at Mingus Union High School, I want to thank our sponsors. When you go out and talk to these sponsors, please thank them for sponsoring Mingus Marauder Football. Of course, our Jones Ford is our 
scoreboard sponsor out here as the Mingus Marauders are leading 26 to seven. Jennifer Griffin, our coin toss sponsor. Neil Dixon and Reese's Tire, the eye on the game sponsor out there. I want to thank Taylor Way, Skittles, High Desert Mechanical, Yavapai College, Tiffany Construction, and Larry Green Chevrolet. Mingus will set up for the field goal. This is going to be a 35 yard field wow. goal attempt out here for Hernandez. With a high snap last time and they didn't get the extra point. And there is all sorts of movement. Yeah, kick is up and the kick would be, would be, would be. They're not going to show it because I think we're going to get an encroachment. Coming across the er uh, early was the near side here for the Skyhawks. But I want to know. And Mingus will get five yards forward. But what if it was good? Yeah, that's my question. Because then we don't need to re-kick. So you would think. I think Jah I think it was good because Jahir's looking at the sidelines going, hey, what, why, why am I going to kick it again? Right. Well, uh, it's called practice. It's sir. called encore. Yeah. Encore. So uh, encore indeed. 30-yard field goal attempt out here by Hernandez. With 7.42 left to go, quarter number four, the kick is up. The kick is no good. Man, it had the distance, did not have the direction. It was wide to the left out there. So Hernandez comes up with his arms. Hey, you know what? Good shot, man. Yep. Good shot. It had plenty of distance. I will take that all day long. 7.38, the Mingus Marauders will turn it over on downs, and uh, Deer Valley will get the ball at their own 20-yard line. And... Uh, the Mingus Marauders will come out defensively here. They leave a long field out here for Deer Valley. And the defense has had their way with the Skyhawks so far tonight. I mean, English has got a great arm and made some great passes, but the Marauders just standing strong. First field goal attempt out there for the Mingus Marauders. Hernandez comes back out late, takes the defensive end position. They're going to throw quickly to the outside. Leckington catches it and makes the tackle for a short gain. Good defense, good open field defense out there for the Mingus Marauders. And that's going to be Colston on the reception out there. Paxton Colston wearing number five will pick up two. Yeah, and that's uh, another one of those really quick passes out to the flat by the that Skyhawks. Is, that's their running game, though. Yeah, it really is. And like you said earlier in the in the game, it, it's a good, fast way to get the ball to the outside. But Marauders playing good containment. Protects your quarterback, too. You get the ball out of his hand very quickly, and they hand it off. Here comes Johnson rumbling, stumbling through the middle, and Leckington back-to-back -back tackles, and that one was a big one. How about that? as a huge game, best ground game of the day. Johnson burst through a hole and was able to pick up good yardage out to the 37 yard line. And that time the Skyhawks offensive line does a really nice job of opening up a hole for Johnson to get through there. 15 yards on the carry. That is definitely his best carry of the day for Johnson. Quarterback out of shotgun, three receivers to the top side. Takes his time, waits for the snap. Hello, hello. There it is. Looks to throw, throws to the outside, has a man immediately tackled. Good open field tackle once again. And that's going to, going to be number 16, Xavier Thompson on the tackle, playing some corner out there. Gain of five. And that's the Skyhawks putting together a little bit of a drive. They're still in their own territory here, but having some positive offensive plays. And Marauders have kind of really stopped them all night until uh, this drive here. Second and five from their own 42-yard line. English out of uh, the snap and will throw quickly Ooh. to the Ooh. outside, somehow staying on his feet and wow. then wrestled to the ground. And uh, uh, when he's in Mingus Marauder territory, how about that? Eight yards, 12 yards on the reception out there. Oh my goodness. Brody Keith, what a playmaker there for the Skyhawks. I mean, they, Marauders could not get him down there. Well, they went to tackle him high and he shook it off. And for a, a little slot receiver, that's, that's pretty impressive out there. That's his eighth reception and he's got 76 yards unofficially. New line of scrimmage is the 46 yard line for or of the Mingus Marauders. 
Two backs in the backfield at the moment. Two receivers to the near side. There's the snap. Fake the handoff. Give it to the second back. And it's going to be Marcus Johnson. Marcus Johnson will get forward progress for three. And a little bit of trickery in the backfield that time by English and the Skyhawks. And the only positive thing about this drive that the Skyhawks are having is it is eating a lot of clock. I mean, we're just over four minutes left in the game here. 26-7. Skyhawks kind of playing for possession and pride out here. Mingus shows blitz, backs, his, backs out of it. Three receivers to the near side, and they're going to throw. And it comes to Keith. Keith is caught and taken down. It's going to be Camacho on the tackle and finished out there by Calandra. Yeah, and there's Camacho. You can see the replay there. Nice to see him back in. Man, playmaker, man. It's a great job. Good read. Way to get out there. And yeah, Camacho pretty much tackled him with one arm. Good spin move trying to get out of it, but Camacho held on to him. Well, you're going to stop his progress because he's slithery as he'll pick up two. Yeah, I like that, slithery. I he like is that. slithery. I can't say that real fast. Second half. English has only had one incompletion. Looks to throw once again. Throws the ball downfield, and Leckington was on the defense. Brody Keith, the intended receiver, he looked to the outside, should have looked to the inside where the ball was thrown. And it's going to bring fourth and eight from the Minkus Marauder 44-yard line. As soon as I start talking about English, he yeah. gets a second incompletion of the half. And you know that earlier, the other complete incompletion was the same type of throw. So it's a good ball. Uh, wide receiver is just not looking right over their head. They're looking right or left for it. And English has got that ball going right over their helmet. Dylan English was not available last year when we played them down at Deer Valley. He had some sort of injury and so they were definitely um, scrambling at the quarterback position. English comes out, gets hit, and there's going to be a flag, throws the ball downfield off of the fingertips, but that's going to be a that is going to be uh, a roughing the passer call against the Mingus Marauders. Now you're going to get to see the replay here on Verde Valley TV, and boy, it was really close timing, and I think you're right, Jackie. I think they're going to get the Marauders for the uh, personal foul. Yeah, they most certainly do, and they're going to move the Skyhawks downfield, and that's a tough one. That's it's. You know, that's one that's always up for debate, right? I mean, you want to, you know, protect the kids, and it's all about safety, but at the same time, you got to let them play, and that was really close on timing, but uh, they're going to call that one on the Marauders. First down via penalty as it brings the ball to the 29-yard line. Clock has stopped at 3.40 left to go in the game. Ming is still leading 26-7, to trying to keep just seven points on the board defensively out here. English, out of shotgun, takes a snap, moves to her right, has some time, looks downfield, and has to run, scam, scrambles, and then slides for a three-yard gain. There is a flag on the play. But there is a flag on the play, says the field announcer. The flag sits at the 34-yard line. And yes. one would wonder whether or not that would go yeah. against the Skyhawks. It was a wise move by... English to just slide there at the end as he had like three marauders staring at him. I, and I would look for number 11. It's going to be a hold against the Skyhawks, and if number 11 is coming at me, I'm sliding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and any of those defensive linemen that you can see on your Verde Valley TV screen there, those are the, uh, the big guys. The big guns are out there for the marauders right now. Bowers has had a great game. Sorry, Jackie. Yeah, Choate's had a great game. Did you hear Hernandez? These guys deserve so much recognition. Four penalties for 25 yards. Three receivers to the top, one to the bottom. They've got a one-on-one -on -one down to the bottom. English looks to take the snap, looks to the right-hand side, scrambles to the right, throws the ball, throws the ball downfield, has a man off the fingertips. Well-thrown ball out there to Jacob Kreisiger, and he is unable to come down with it. That should have been points. Wow. Just wow, it, it, you can see the replay right here. Uh, English drops back and he's not in the pocket too long and what a ball. Man, that just goes over Jacob's hands and he almost brought it in too. 
Camacho is playing that safety position out there for Brulin. Brulin is sitting down on the bench. So his night is over. King Hernandez is out on the field for the Mingus Marauders. It is second and 20, and it's going to be a run by English. English will be taken down from behind. It's King Hernandez, and then out comes a flag. No, it's Lathan with the tackle, I'm sorry. Flag on the play. It's a pretty late flag. It came after the tackle, which usually means it's about the tackle. But I didn't quite see anything. Normally a late hit at that particular point, and it's going to be a personal foul, personal foul. against the Mingus Marauders, and that should be enough for a first down. And boy, I, I will uh, I will say that uh, we are protecting the quarterback here tonight. That's the second time English has been hit and a flag has been thrown. And a first down Skyhawks. Quickly, the Mingus Marauders have gotten themselves up to 75 penalty yards, but more importantly, a first down in the red zone at the Mingus Marauder 19-yard line, 245 left to go in the game. English takes the snap and uh, hands it off. It's going to be Johnson. Johnson goes up the middle, picks up three. That'll keep the clock rolling. Mingus is certainly okay with that with a 26 to seven lead. Yep, just about to that two minute mark and I mean, no timeouts right now for Deer Valley as I think you called it earlier, Jackie. I think they're playing for pride right now, trying to put together a good drive and get some points at the end of this game because it most certainly looks like the Marauders will be victorious here on homecoming. Some of our other sponsors for Mingus Marauder Football 2023 are Northern Arizona Healthcare, Sun Country Custom Woodworks, D-Best Plumbing, Rock Zoo Screen Printing, and All Price Insurance. Three receivers to the bottom of your screen if you're watching Verde Valley TV. English takes the snap out of shotgun, looks to throw, throws the ball downfield, and diving for it, not able to come up with it. And that's gonna bring up a third and eight from the 17 yard line. Clock stops with 151 left to go in the game. English with a, another really fast throw. English putting some English on it. Yeah, he tried to get it in a window between red shirts out there. Third and eight from the 17 yard line. Here come the Skyhawks, two receivers either side, one back in the backfield, and a quick pass to the near side. It's gonna be caught by Keith. Keith weaves his way close to a first down, may have it out there. And they are going to give him the first down and possession will remain here with the Skyhawks. Now, for the Skyhawks, they're gonna go first and goal at the 10 yard line. So a seven yard pass out there to Keith who struggles for the first down. Glad to see he's out there still playing hard. This has been a extended but phenomenal drive, albeit helped by Mingus Marauder penalties, but still a fantastic drive out here for the Skyhawks and something that they can build on. And they've kept the Mingus Marauder offense off the field here most of the fourth quarter. There is the snap and it is gonna be a handoff. Coming to the near side is going to be Marcus Johnson. Marcus Johnson will be covered up and tackled out there. Some new players out there for the Mingus Marauders. Getting in on the tackle is gonna be George Dano. And I believe I saw Ethan Mont Montiel out there as well. Gain of four, second and goal from the six. And Ethan was also a uh, nominee for Homecoming Prince as well. So he was. He's getting out there and getting some action in the game now and great tackle. So remind me, who are our king and queen for 2027? Here, Hernandez and Miss Roken. Oh, our queen. Shotgun once again. There's the snap and uh, the quarterback keeps it himself and that was not a good idea. Bowers comes in, and it looks like who else made the tackle out there? Okay, it's going to be a timeout. Should be a timeout. Third and goal back from the 11-yard line now. 
21 seconds left to go and we will have a timeout. We're going to go ahead and leave it here because this could be, we're coming down to the final plays of the fourth uh, quarter. Now, Mingus has only had the ball once here in the fourth quarter. Am I correct or have we had the ball at all? No, you're right. And the Marauders were able to do something with it the one time they had it. And uh, I guess that proved to be really important. Huh? I mean, Deer Valley's had it this entire fourth quarter, which again is a great drive for them. And this will be an outstanding way for them to end the game with some you know, confidence and momentum. So this is, this is definitely a competition out here. Third and goal from the 11. The Skyhawks have had the ball since Mingus scored last, or tried to score last. It was a missed 30-yard field goal at 7.38 left to go. And so this has been over a seven-minute drive, seven-minute wow. and 18-second drive by the squad from Deer Valley. Once again, helped by Mingus Marauder penalties. I will throw that out there. Shotgun, two receivers either side. 21 seconds left to go in the game in homecoming 2023. And English has got to find a man, throws to the outside, getting in for the touchdown out there. And uh, we'll see if there are any penalties. It's going to be Marcus jo uh, uh, Johnson out of the backfield on the touchdown. So 26-13, Mingus has it doubled up at the moment here. And this will be the uh, the extra point, and then we'll have kickoff, and that'll be it, because there's only 15 seconds left. Again, Deer Valley playing for pride there. What a nice drive, which we'll talk about in the post-game show that they put together here at the end of this one. Extra point attempt by English is low and no good. He hit it hard, but he hit it low. So it's going to stay 26 to 13 here. We're going to take a quick break. Final kickoff, most likely an onside, coming up after this. For 30 years, Rock Zoo screen printers have provided Northern Arizona with clean, crisp, quality screen printing. They work with you to make the right choices in creating the right artwork and message to put forth your best image. Choose from brand name products and even fashion forward designs, including caps, tees, sweatshirts, polos, and jackets. Make Rock Zoo your choice for work and sports uniforms, workwear, resort wear, and more. Find out more at ROKZOOTEES.com. Rock Zoo screen printers in Cottonwood. Well, Mingus is definitely set up for an onside kick here. The deep man sits at the 38-yard line. <laughs> 22 yards deep. Johnson, the running back, is also the kickoff man. And all about ball safety here. Will he go right? Will he go left? Will he go straight? Only time will tell. And it is going to be a deep kick. And it is going to go down and set at the 23-yard line. It is returnable and picked up and returned just for a little bit. I would have just sat on it. But at the 23-yard line, 12 ticks left in this one. Should be victory formation out here for the Mingus Marauders. And homecoming should go in the books. Coming up next week on the road, Grand Canyon Region action begins with a trip to go see the Flagstaff Eagles. Now, what a great game that's going to be. I, I can't wait for region play. All right, that's always the biggest competition. You play your non-region non games, get ready for the region, and then the winner of the region makes playoffs. Sometimes two teams can make it, but you got to be playing really well and yep. win a lot of games for that, so the Marauders. But not guaranteed with the point system nowadays. Yes, that right. is definitely true. And a victory formation. Stokes will take the knee, hand it to the man with the white hat, and then will come to the near sideline, lead his team off the field as... He was perfect throwing the ball here today. The cannon marks a victory for the Mingus Marauders for homecoming 2023. Final score, Mingus 26, the Skyhawks from Deer Valley 13. They're going to shake hands. We're going to take a break and come back for our Gettles High Desert Mechanical Post Game Show coming up after this. Choose the region's most comprehensive heart program. Choose care close to home. Choose world-class surgeons. Choose Northern Arizona Healthcare. Choose precision. 
Choose innovation. Choose robotic-assisted knee and hip replacement. Choose Northern Arizona Healthcare. Yavapai College has many degree and certificate programs to get you on track to a rewarding, well-paying career in a variety of industries such as healthcare, manufacturing, construction, elementary education, and art. Fall semester starts on August 15th, so there's still time to register. Visit us online today at yc.edu slash admission to connect with your future career. For 30 years, Roxu Screen Printers have provided Northern Arizona with clean, crisp, quality screen printing. They work with you to make the right choices in creating the right artwork and message to put forth your best image. Choose from brand name products and even fashion forward designs, including caps, tees, sweatshirts, polos, and jackets. Make Roxu your choice for work in sports uniforms, workwear, resort wear, and more. Find out more at ROKZUTEES.com. Roxu Screen Printers in Cottonwood, where clothing comes to rock. I'm I'm Chris. And I'm Tandy, owners of Taylor Waste. We're homegrown in the Verde Valley and nearly your last local choice. We want to be your first choice for residential and small business garbage service. Get a free month service when you make the switch to Taylor Waste. And enjoy monthly service as low as $16 per month. Visit TaylorWaste.com for more information. Or to start service, call Taylor Waste at 649-2662. Taylor Waste, service tailored to your needs. People often refer to Larry Green Chevrolet as the people place. Keeping that reputation is a priority in the community and with every customer that comes through the door. Larry Green Chevrolet, we're better and we'll prove it. If you're in the market for a new or pre-owned car, truck, van, or SUV, you'll find our selection extensive and the sales team professional and courteous. Visit Larry Green Chevrolet just off Highway 260 next to Walmart or LarryGreenChevrolet.com. Homecoming 2023, the Mingus Marauders victorious 26 to 13. They double up the Skyhawks out here today. The Skyhawks score uh, last and they score second and they scored last to make it a game out here. Mingus scores first and never gave up the lead. A keeper by Stokes, 14 yards for the Mingus Marauders led it off. Hernandez had the extra point. It was uh, seven to nothing. And then Mingus would score again in the second quarter. A uh, two yard counter by Ralston with 11.06 left to go in quarter number two. Set up by a great Grijalva run. And Hernandez had the extra point. It was 14 to nothing. Second quarter action, 10 minutes left to go. Two passing touchdowns by Deer Valley. The first of two, a 22 yard pass. English to Kreisinger. And the extra point by English was good. It was 14 to seven. Mingus would score again with 3.40 seven left to go in the first half. A one yard run by Grahova and the extra point, a high snap. It was no good. It was 20 to seven at halftime. Mingus would score on their first drive in the second half. 8.59 left to go and a 20 yard run by Senna and the two point conversion pass, no good. It was 26 to seven. And then with 7.38 left to go, uh, Mingus attempts a 30-yard field goal. Hernandez definitely had the leg for it, did not have the direction. It was no good off to the left. It was 26-7, and uh, the squad from Deer Valley would take over with 7.28 left to go in, 7.38 left to go in the game. They would take it all the way down, helped by some Mingus Marauder penalties for sure that gave them first downs, but they scored with 15 seconds left, an 11-yard pass to English, English to Johnson out of the backfield. The extra point attempt by English was a line drive low and no good. 26 to 13, your final score out here. Um, but they controlled the entire last seven minutes of the game. Yeah, Coach Friedman's got to be really happy with how that ended for the Skyhawks offense. Uh, and like you said, I know there were some penalties involved there, but the Skyhawks did everything they needed to do to go down and score that touchdown. And it's, you know, if they could have put together a few more drives like that during the game, obviously we'd see a different score on that board, but Marauders held strong all night. I thought offensively played really, really well. Probably the best I've seen them play. I missed last week, and I know they put up 42 points. So right now, Marauders coming off a couple 
great offensive weeks, and that's exactly what we need going into region play. Well, Mingus now goes three and two. Um, you've got uh, you've got Copper Canyon matching up with the Eagles from Flagstaff. So if the Eagles pull that one out, then the Eagles are two and three, and the Mingus Marauders are three and two going into Grand Canyon region play. It'll be interesting. Of course, home field advantage yep. at the NAU walk-up Sky Dome. Got to remind you that the game is early. It is going to be a 6 p.m. game, which means we're talking about pregame at 5.30. Heck, we're just starting to set up at 5.30. Yep. It's going to be pregame at 5.30, so we're going to have to be on our best and early, sharp, quickly, and uh, we'll have that game for you, of course, on KYBC AM 1600 and 96.3, of course, Verde Valley TV, uh, Sparklight Channel 1056, as well as our YouTube channel at Verde Valley TV. We're going to take a break. We're going to go through individual stats and then a final recap of the game when we return to the cave here at Mingus Union High School after this. The right vehicles, the right people, the right price. Make Jones Ford of Verde Valley the right place to buy. Choose from our new in-stock Ford selection or custom order just the way you want it. Buy pre-owned with peace of mind with Jones Ford's lifetime powertrain warranty at no extra cost. Plus, drive a little, save a lot. Jones Ford is your tax advantage destination. So for the right vehicles at the right price, make the right choice. Jones Ford Verde Valley, family owned and operated for over half a century. Just off I-17 in Camp Verde. I'm Chris. And I'm Tandy, owners of Taylor Waste. We're homegrown in the Verde Valley and nearly your last local choice. We want to be your first choice for residential and small business garbage service. Get a free month service when you make the switch to Taylor Waste. And enjoy monthly service as low as $16 per month. Visit TaylorWaste.com for more information. Or to start service, call Taylor Waste at 649-2662. Taylor Waste, service tailored to your needs. Starting in the late 1920s, Grandpa Gettle and his brothers laid the groundwork for what would become a family legacy. Almost 100 years and 100 patents later, Gettle's High Desert Mechanical continues to raise the bar of quality heating, cooling, and plumbing products and services throughout Yavapai County and Flagstaff. Call Gettle's High Desert Mechanical Heating, Air Conditioning, and Plumbing at 567-2200 or online at goettlshdm.com. Providing solutions for your comfort. Don't settle. Get Gettle's and go Marauder. Waters. Call Rick or Scott Stokes at Sun Country Custom Woodworks about cabinets for every purpose and every budget. Sun Country Custom Woodworks can custom build cabinets for your dream kitchen or bath, adding tremendous value to your home. Organize the garage and store stuff right with a call to Sun Country. And ask about money-saving options, including modular cabinet choices. You know, your cabinets may not be from this century. For ideas, start at suncountrywoodworks.com. Choose the region's most comprehensive heart program. Choose care close to home. Choose world-class surgeons. Choose Northern Arizona Healthcare. Choose precision. Choose innovation. Choose robotic-assisted knee and hip replacement. Choose Northern Arizona Healthcare. Twenty-six thirteen. Your final score here should be left up on the scoreboard, but they turned the scoreboard off. They're getting ready to, you know, finish up all of the uh, homecoming festivities. How about that? Our uh, king and queen out here today. Congratulations as we get King Hernandez and Queen. We got King oh. Jahir Hernandez out there for uh, for the Mingus Marauders, looking good too, and he. Uh, Oh yeah, and he was he was good on the field too. Had a yep. great game on the field. Yep, and your uh, 2023 homecoming queen Riley Boken. So there both of them getting the uh, the the big chairs out there during halftime. That was awesome to see. The big chairs. That's going to be fun at the mm -hmm. homecoming dance too. So we take a look at uh, some stats here for the Mingus Marauders. Stokes was perfect. Threw the ball four times. Had four completions out there, 60 yards, and uh, two of them going to Grahalva for 20. 
25 yards, two of them going to De La Haye for 35 yards. And then on the ground, the Mingus Marauders definitely did some damage here as they end up with 265 yards on 43 carries unofficially here in the game. Mikey Grijalva picks up his not one, not second, third, third 100 yard rushing game in a row, 17 carries, 129 yards, gets a touchdown to go along with it. His biggest carry of the game, 33 yards. Senna coming in for Bruland, who was injured. Hopefully, 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 it will be a sprain that we get him back next week for Flagstaff. Senna ends up with eight carries and 35 yards, has a 20 yard uh, touchdown with it. Rain Stokes has four carries. Uh, one sack in the game uh, ends up with 24 yards on four carries and a touchdown. Ralston touches the ball three times, and he will pick up 34 yards on three carries. He also gets a touchdown. Uh, for the visiting squad here from Deer Valley, well, English went 19 for 31. He threw the ball 31 wow. times in this game. Holy yeah. cow. 131 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. We didn't see an interception in the game. One turnover. Mingus coughed the ball up once in the game. That would be the only turnover on the ground. Mingus held Deer Valley to 40 yards on 12 carries. 40 yards on wow. 12 carries. Yep. Holy cow. Marcus Johnson, if it wasn't for a 15-yard carry, he would have barely gotten out of, he wouldn't have gotten out of 20 yards. He ends up with eight uh, carries for 30 yards. He does have a receiving touchdown in the game. Dylan English has 10 yards on four carries. He is quite an athlete from that quarterback position. The story has been Brody Keith, who ends up with 10 receptions, 85 yards. His biggest being a 37-yard scamper, and most of those were one and two yard passes to him. Those were all rack yards after the catch out there. Marcus Johnson had two receptions, one of them being a touchdown. Uh, Jacob Kreisinger had a couple of receptions out there as well. So the Mingus Marauders hold the Deer Valley squad to uh, just 171 yards on the game. Mingus puts up pretty good yardage. Uh, you know, what's your what's your overall take here? Mingus was efficient in the air and and could run the ball when they wanted to. Yeah, I, I, th I thought offensively, I mean, they deserve a lot of accolades for tonight. I feel like they put together several drives, finished those drives in the end zone. Um, so offensively, you got to have some momentum. You scored 42 points last week, 26 points tonight. So you're getting in the end zone. So going into region play offensively you got to feel good uh, defensively but I thought we adjusted really well I think Deer Valley had that pass out to the flat so many times and like you said that's like a running play outside and it is it's a hard that's a good play call right there especially when you have a quarterback that can zing it out really quick mm -hmm. like English was doing um, and I thought the Marauders adjusted to that great and by the end of the game you had Leckington going out and meeting the you know the wide receiver catching the ball Senna was doing the same thing um, so I thought the defensive secondary came up big and played those flat that's really well, good adjustments. Um, so, yeah, I think the Marauders have great momentum going into region play. Could have been a little bit of a different game if they got some of their long game to come down mm -hmm. correctly because there there were some long passes that yeah. went yeah, off of right. fingertips. Right. There's like three of them that yeah. uh, got behind the defense that uh, did not did not cost right the Mingus Marauders. Really good passes just yeah. right over the wide receiver's helmet. That's yeah, a great call out because you're right. There was a few close calls there. Certainly so. So, um, you know, the Deer Valley Valley squad has to think they had their opportunities and just couldn't quite take no. advantage of them. Not to say that Mingus wouldn't have put their foot on the gas had it been, you know, right. if, if one or right. two of those would have uh, come through. Uh, certainly want to wish Bruland a, um, a, a speedy recovery. Um, hopefully that is not a serious injury and that he will be able to join us for next game because I think we're going to need him against the Flagstaff Eagles. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, region play is going to be super tough no matter who your opponent is. And the Grand Canyon region has been getting better better and better. So uh, there were a few years where we, the Grand Canyon region may have kind of, not been the laughing stock, I don't want to say that, but at the bottom of the barrel in 4A and not anymore. I mean, we're climbing up and Prescott's had some great seasons. Some Marauders, you know, have had great seasons as well. The Bradshaw, uh, Flagstaff looks to be turning around. They already got a win. I know they've had some uh, rebuilding seasons. Coconino has put together some power teams in the last decade as well. So it's nice to see the 4A Grand Canyon region playing well.
Well, Mingus is going to have to step up to play in it, and it starts with Flagstaff. So Mingus uh, attempting to go 4-2 and two next game against Flagstaff at the NAU Walk-Up Sky Dome. Pre-game at 5.30, not 6.30, 5.30, and uh, kickoff at 6 p.m. We're going to have to change that promo and get that uh, changed out. Um, that'll be at the Walk-Up Sky Dome, which will be, uh, 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 that'll be a thrill to go play on a college College Seriously. field. Oh, it, yeah, it it's really be. It, it, you know, I got to do it one time, and it was amazing. It, it really is cool to play in that Sky Dome. It's a great atmosphere. Uh, with the elevation, you do lose your breath a little bit more than normal. Uh, granted, uh, I'm a lineman, so right. uh, I well, lose my breath normally. Right. So I lose my breath at about <laughs> step three coming yeah. up to the press box. Same. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, that's okay. I, I yeah. certainly understand that. So, once again, the Mingus Marauders victorious on Homecoming 2023, and uh, we are going to bid you a wonderful night. Want to thank our producer. Kyle Ward, our camera crew here tonight did a great job. Zach Klein, Rainy Shower, and Steve Endicott. And uh, for Nick Yatsenko, I'm Jackie Bessler, wishing you a phenomenal homecoming week. We will look forward to seeing you once again at the NAU Walk Up Sky Dome next Friday night for an early game. Till then, we wish you well. This has been the Post Game Report brought to you by Gettles High Desert Mechanical Heating, AC, and Plumbing Specialist online at GettlesHDM.com. Starting in the late 1920s, Grandpa Gettle and his brothers laid the groundwork for what would become a family legacy. Almost 100 years and 100 patents later, Gettle's High Desert Mechanical continues to raise the bar of quality heating, cooling, and plumbing products and services throughout Yavapai County and Flagstaff. Call Gettle's High Desert Mechanical Heating, Air Conditioning, and Plumbing at 567-2200 or online at GOETTLSHDM.com. Providing solutions for your comfort. Don't settle. Get Gettle's and go Marauder. This has been a presentation of Yavapai Broadcasting Sports. Any rebroadcast or use of this broadcast without written permission from Mingus Union High School or Yavapai Broadcasting is expressly prohibited. Tonight's Mingus Broader game has been sponsored in part by Jones Ford Verde Valley, Arizona's best since 1970. State Farm Insurance Agent Jennifer Griffin. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Taylor Waste, service tailored to your needs. Rock Zoo Screen Printing, where clothing comes to rock. Longfellow Excavating, we dig your ideas. Northern Arizona Healthcare Orthopedic and Spine Institutes. Mangus Marauder Football is also brought to you by these fine businesses. Reese's Tire and Automotive Tire Pros, more miles for your money. Larry Green Chevrolet, the people place. All price insurance. Get your quote. Gettles High Desert Mechanical. Don't settle. Get Gettles. Tiffany Construction. A reputation for exceptional service and an unwavering commitment to quality. D-Best Plumbing. They believe in getting it right the first time. Sun Country Custom Woodworks. Serving all of Northern Arizona with commercial and residential custom cabinets. And Yavapai College. You can. We can. Together. Stay tuned for the next Mingus football game on KYBC AM 1600 and 96.3 FM. Or go to the Verde Valley TV channel on YouTube to watch this and other Mingus games on demand.